Thank you. Good morning. Today we have one more item. I thank members for their your support. We have a group of elderly people who like to talk to us about dental service, and we hope that uh, the government uh, will take into account their views in the preparation. And I have discussed the matter with uh, the deputy chairman. So we are going to have an extended meeting today. First item is a support for elderly persons who are in need of dental care. Uh, the papers have been sent to members. At this point, maybe we should invite the deputations and the officials to join us. Good morning. Good morning. Today we have Deputy Secretary, PEO, and Dr. So from the administration, and uh, on top, we also have some deputations. Uh, we have also informed members of the health services panel. It's a, a session for both panels, but it's not a joint panel meeting. Yes, please be seated. On my left, left side, please. Watch your, your steps. Please. Take your time. Welcome. Please be seated. Take your time. You can see something on your table. There's a earpiece. Please wear this earpiece for tuning in to the right channel. If you want to listen to foreign language, then uh, you just wear it. But if you want to listen, tune in to Putonghua, it's channel 3. English Channel 2, just press the right button. If you have any questions, please ask our steward for assistance. Uh, with six uh, deputations, we have a group representing elderly persons in Kowloon City, and also a representative from DAB, and another one from Kwai Ching, uh, KS Elderly Concern Group, another mutual aid. Uh, group uh, for singly elderly in Tim One Estate, and another one is a concern group on uh, the rights of the elderly. So over to the administration for an introduction first. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, Mr. Chung, yes. Uh, good morning. We have uh, submitted a, an information paper. With regard to the uh, focus of our discussion today is about uh, dental services, for the elderly, I would like to say something about what the administration has been doing over the years. Apart from the uh, subsidy provided for the dental service, well, we mainly do this uh, through financial support, so the elderly persons can uh, have access to dental services. In 2009, the, the uh, medical uh, Voucher scheme 
was launched and uh, in from January this year this has been regularized and in early June this year early this month we've increased the value to two thousand uh, dollars per year in 2011 with some NGOs we launch a three-year pilot scheme on uh, outreaching services. The NGOs have uh, set up 24 outreach uh, service teams to elderly homes or day, day center for uh, the elderly to provide free dental services to the elderly persons. And in October, uh, again, this uh, pilot scheme will be regularized so that uh, elderly persons who are relatively in poor health or in uh, relatively uh, substandard living conditions will be covered. So we are going to cover the uh, treatment uh, to cover tooth filling, uh, denture fixing, and the grant, the level grant, will be increased to help uh, elderly persons in need and the community care fund also reserved a uh, million dollars to subsidize needy non CSSA recipient aged 60 or above who are user of the two types of service surrendered by SWD Uh, having considered the initial response of this CCF program, the CCF has also introduced uh, enhanced uh, measures to uh, cover more elderly persons and also to um, make improve arrangements for the coverage of the services. And the administration is now considering extending the coverage to other non CSSA recipients. For those for example those on uh, elderly persons on OALA, OH living allowance. We are still we are making uh, preparation for the launch of the extended service. We hope uh, details can be announced in due course. Lastly, let me talk about manpower. We are very really concerned about the uh, manpower with uh, dentists in Hong Kong. The Food and Health Bureau is now conducting a review on uh, manpower planning of uh, healthcare professionals. We need to ascertain the, the uh, service demand in the future, the, ex the projected demand for healthcare personnel manpower, including that of dentists, and uh, if uh, if there's a case to provide more training places, how to do it? We're also going to uh, look at the uh, funding timetable uh, of uh, different universities and see how we can uh, increase manpower to tie in with uh, service demand. At the same time, we also consider some short-term measures together with uh, the dentist uh, service uh, providers in our universities and uh, relevant organizations, we'll try to see how we can uh, facilitate the uh, attainment of uh, dentist professional qualification here in Hong Kong. Mainly we're talking about dentists who are educated and qualified outside Hong Kong. They are local people. It's just that they received their training, the dentist training, outside Hong Kong. So that's a brief introduction for me. I'll pause here and I will be listening to uh, the views from our deputations. Thank you, Mr. David Jung, the Deputy Secretary for Food and Health. Do you hear what uh, Mr. Jung said? Please speak to the mic. Well, maybe I'm a senior person. Uh, I, th I thought the voice was a bit uh, low. Deputation speaking time now. I would like to remind the deputations that uh, 
under the electrical powers and privileges ordinance cap 3A2. Uh, your speeches here are not covered. And uh, you should be made aware of that. And uh, the electrical secretary will also like to tell you those attending electrical meetings and uh, those uh, observing in the gallery should uh, refer to the NOOCs issued by the Secretariat. Uh, today, again, apart from Mr. Chung from Food and Health Bureau with uh, the PEO, Mr. Lee from uh, Food and Health Bureau, and then we have Mr. Dr. So Hon Sheng, Senior Dan Dental Officer from the Department of Health. They are officials whose uh, duties are related to the subject under discussion. Each, each deputation is now invited to speak for three minutes. I believe uh, that should be sufficient. If that's not sufficient, uh, well, you can submit further views later. Nick, the first one, the deputation from uh, Kowloon City, Madam Lee Muham. Good morning. I represent an elderly group uh, in Kowloon City. I would like to tell you our uh, request. We want to have a dental service in each of the districts, uh, providing the filling, denture, and other dental services. There should be an, uh, an annual uh, scaling and uh, examination service. According to WHO, well, the uh, standard to follow is that uh, at the age of 80, you sh one should still have 20 teeth. In 2011, in between July and August, some low-income elderly persons uh, were assessed. The findings are worrying. Those elderly persons told us that they didn't even have 10 teeth, let alone 20. Half of them, or 20, 200 elderly persons, had no tooth at all. And you know that uh, extraction and denture uh, are very expensive. It may cost you $10,000. You've, you've asked elderly persons to the, attend uh, el elderly centers, but if you have uh, dental problems, you just don't have the mood to go to an elderly center for activities. I hope. Well, since Hong Kong is a wealthy community, it's an international city, and this is just a small measure, and still we are seeing a lot of procrastination. So the government should let all el elder persons uh, the chance to the enjoy the twilight years. There should be more uh, concessions offered, and uh, we hope that elderly persons can be more active, uh, work as volunteers. Uh, so I hope uh, our request can be assisted, assisted to. In Kowloon City, um, the, um, the dental clinic I used to visit um, has been moved, and many elderly people um, aren't aware of it. The clinic has been moved. Every week, um, the, the, the clinic is open only for two days each week, and um, there are less than 130 lots each week. And um, the elderly people didn't know about the new location, so the government should do more promotions. 
Um, I did. I had a uh, tooth extracted last week, and I was given an injection, and I was told to just um, take a short rest. And if you didn't, if I didn't feel any pain, I could go. And uh, the uh, the equipment was rather nice. The environment was nice, and uh, the doctors, the dentists were of high standards. So, so I think we should. Um, let more people know about the the clinic. Yes, thank you very much. The Democratic Alliance for the Betterment and Progress of Hong Kong, Mr. Nga. Um, since the uh, dental um, scheme was launched in September 2012, only about 900 people benefited, and we are very concerned with the situation. How can we benefit more elderly people? The DABHK hopes to hopes that the government would expand um, the scope of the scheme, and uh, to uh, so that other um, elderly people can also benefit. The government doesn't provide enough dental support to the elderly, as um, as um, the uh, um, deput uh, deputation mentioned. Um, Right now, the government is only providing help um, t in terms of the outreach pilot project and the CCF. They're only helping elderly people with financial difficulties. For financial, um, for non-CSSA recipients without grave financial difficulties, should the government um, consider providing some help? And uh, Mrs. Lee said. Of the of the eleven dental clinics provided by the government, um, the um, the opening hours are very limited, and um, they were only open for half a day or or one day per week, which is inadequate. A lot of our elderly people didn't um, um, take care of their teeth very well when they were young, and such as such, they would require dental services. For example. Um, they would need um, crowns or dentures, which is really expensive for them. The government cannot ignore this problem. Um, the government should popularize the uh, assistance schemes provided and relieve the financial stress of the elderly people. And uh, the and uh, DAB recommends setting up um, public dental clinics, and the government should provide um, dental services. Dental care services to those over 55 years of age, and on the long run, we can alleviate the financial burdens of our elderly people. And as the deputy secretary said, for the voucher scheme, um, the government has more than 470 dentists enrolled in the scheme. But according to a lot of elderly people, the charges are rather high, and they would rather use the. Uh, um, assist the voucher amounts for um, doctors, and they sometimes they might even um, visit unlicensed dentists because they charge less. So apart from the voucher scheme, the DAB um, suggests setting aside another um, assistance amount to ensure that the elderly can receive regular dental care. And uh, Miss Liu from KS Elderly Concern Group, good morning. I'm Liu Sokling. I represent Kwai Sheng East Estate. I'm concerned with dental services because Hong Kong has eleven district eighteen districts and yet it only has eleven dental clinics. And the Chun Wan also includes some um, Kwai Cheng. And Cheng Yi, Tun Moon, Yun Long, and uh, people from all these areas have to go to Chun Wan for dental services. And uh, the stress on the Chun Wan clinic is very high, so I hope that e each district should has should have its own dental clinic every week. Um, only the Chun Wan Clinic is open for two days each week for dental services, 
and uh, so that means only about 100 patients can um, can enjoy dental services every week and a lot of elderly people um, didn't bother um, coming over because it was so um, um, energy sapping for them so they might not be able to come for myself I've once um, visited the clinic but yet I I could not uh, receive services sometimes I had to visit multiple times before I can uh, get my tooth extracted and if I if I am to visit a private dentist even for a regular check and even for a sim very simple check it costs one or two hundred dollars if I have to do an extraction depending on the circ uh, conditions of the your your teeth um, people might charge one or two hundred and for wisdom tooth it can cost two or three thousand dollars so how can the elderly people and uh, people in poverty afford to have their teeth extracted so hopefully the government can invest more resources and that the government should set up at least one clinic in each district so 11 dental clinics in 18 districts is certainly not enough um, the government should invest more resources and um, in order to alleviate the plight of the elderly so that's all I want to say thank you very much this is all from um, Tin Wan Estates, um, um, single elderly people um, support group. My name is Or Chi King from the Tin Wan Estates elderly support group. According to um, the population census, Hong Kong has more than a population of over 7 million, and uh, there are 1.35 million elderly people. And in Hong Kong Island alone, we have more than 120,000. And uh, the uh, the elderly population consists of more than 27,000. Hong Kong has 11 dental clinics. Out of the population of 1.27 people in Hong Kong, we only have a public dental clinic in Taiwan. It provides two sessions of tooth extraction and pain killing services a week, and each each session um, provides eighty four lots. So in a week, we only have one hundred and sixty eight places for these services, and each year. And each year it only serves 7,560 patients in total. So on average, each year 0 0.56 elderly people in Hong Kong can be served. Elderly people in Hong Kong can be served. So it's even less than one person. Dental care is very important for everyone, especially for the elderly. Dental care affects their appearances, and uh, since they uh, they don't often socialize, and uh, dental problems could lead to anxieties or insecurity among the elderly. And uh, their health can um, might be compromised because of dental problems. We urge the government to set up one dental clinic in each each district in Hong Kong to provide um, various dental services for the elderly, 
such as some um, dentures, scaling, filling, extraction, and so on. And uh, we should provide more service sessions as well. That's all I have to say today. So please give it a thought. Mr. Lo Shu K, um, Ellie Rights Concern Group. Good morning, um, members and officials. Um, my name is Lo Siu K. I represent the uh, Ellie Rights Concern Group. And um, for the meeting today, um, our concern group is uh, made up of people from different elderly centers. And since two years ago, we started looking at the issue of dental care. And in 2012, we conducted surveys. We interviewed 1,500 elderly people to understand um, the impacts of dental care services on their lives. Most interviewees agree that um, the dental care services provided by the Hong Kong government is inadequate. Private dentists are very expensive, and the elderly people have uh, are not able to tackle their own dental problems, and as such, their health and living quality are compromised. And uh, through reports, press conferences, um, contacts with electrical members, we announced our survey results, and we also made our um, made our recommendations known, and and in two o one three, in July to August, we launched a territory wide petition um, petition uh, motion, and we received the support of more than fifteen thousand people. We have three requests first. Um, in each dis district, the government should set up um, a dental clinic. Hong Kong only has 11 dental clinics, and uh, we sh we think each of the 18 districts in Hong Kong should have it its own dental clinic. And uh, the uh, dental services should be um, extend should be uh, built in elderly centers as well. And second, the government should uh, should enhance its dental care services. Right now, it only provides. Um, um, pain killing and uh, teeth extraction services, and uh, the government should provide uh, other services like scaling, fillings, and root canal treatment. And uh, right now, the dental clinics only provide one or two sessions a day. So the government should um, let us know the uh, usage rates of its dental clinics, and it should extend the operating hours of the dental clinics according to the needs of different districts. And the number of places for elderly people should be increased. A lot of the elderly people, um, they are, uh, their health conditions are fail, and they have no money to visit private dentists, and uh, they have to line up um, in the middle of the night. So I'm sure no one will object to um, giving more help to our elderly. And third, um, for the uh, elderly health care voucher scheme, even though the voucher amount has been doubled to $2,000, um, but th that amount is not, not enough for the elderly people to even visit a general um, doctor. So the, the amount should be raised to $3,000 a year. And th that money should be um, should 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 help the elderly people in their health dental care services. I'm very happy that the CSSA um, under the CCF um, a one-off grant for dental services is provided, and all eligible eligible elderly people should benefit. And for those who are not covered under CCF, they should also um, receive. A one-off dental grant. In December last year, we met um, the secretary for um, food and health, and uh, Miss they sent um, the political assistant, Miss Chen, to meet with us. But we were really uh, disappointed with their dis with their reply, and. Mr. Ko mentioned um, in the public that the government's um, dental care services um, is only restricted to um, education, and the government would teach us how to 
um, take care of our teeth. But for the elderly people, they are already have um, they already have abscesses and bad teeth, so this is um, useless for them. The government said um, there's a lack of manpower, so I hope the government could should uh, invest more resources and train more local dentists, and they should think of other ways to increase the supply of manpower um, in the dental industry. And and uh, the government, sh uh, the the LegCo should also set up a working group to follow up on the issue of elderly um, dental care services, and we hope to hear from them soon. Leng, Leng, Ms. Leung Mei Ho from uh, LA, LA Rights Concern Group. A few years ago, I was told that one of my teeth was loose, and the dentist said I didn't need to, need it removed. I only need to have it filled. I cannot, um, the, and the dentist said I cannot um, fill it for you. I can only extract it and. Later on, uh, I, I, the, 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 the conditions of my um, teeth got worse, and right now I, uh, I, I've lost a few teeth already. I hope. Uh, I think each dental clinic should provide um, um, scaling, filling, treatment, extraction services. If our students can enjoy. Dental care services. Why can't the elderly also enjoy the dental services? Why do we only have dental clinics in 11 of our 18 districts, and the elderly people have to um, go across to another district? And some people, even when they visit the clinic at 5 a.m., they cannot even uh, get a lot. So I hope that the government should provide. Scaling, filling, treatment, and extraction services. And right now, I cannot even eat properly. Three thousand dollars is not enough. You should provide um, dental services in public hospitals. Even if you give us one or two thousand dollars, it's it's useless. It's uh, we cannot even remove one or two teeth with that amount. Thank you very much. And uh, response from the administration: five minutes maximum. We have a lot of friends here today, so uh, hopefully you can res um, address their uh, questions one by one. I've heard the views of the deputations and LA people today in terms of policy. Right now, we don't have a comprehensive dental services or universal dental service, dental care services. Um, but we do provide preventative and um, and um, specific services. In the last few years, as I mentioned, the government has done a lot more for uh, for the elderly in terms of dental care, and we have done a lot. But I do need to um, stress that manpower is indeed one problem. In the short term, if the government is to um, comprehensively expand its public dental services, we face um, a great challenge. But in the last few years, um, the the uh, the focus has been on to um, help elderly people with specific needs, apart from the voucher scheme. And we also try to help the elderly in LCHEs. They um, they're relatively frail, and it's difficult for them to visit doctors. And we have run the project for three years. And in October this year, we will make this uh, make it a regular program. And um, the outreach teams will continue to help the elderly people. And we have optimized the scheme. Apart from um, enhancing the grant amounts um, to help the elderly people, we also made adjustments to the to the uh, operating hours. Um, right now, the uh, outreach teams will help um, elderly people in LCHEs apply for um, dental grants from the SWD or from other um, charity funds. Having referred to, uh, having learned from the 
experience of the pilot schemes, we want to make it more straightforward. And the cost for scaling, filling, and extraction, for, um, etc., will be incorporated into our regular program. And uh, this way, elderly people in LCHEs can uh, more quickly re ob obtain services they need. And the outreach teams and um, charity groups can uh, um, can uh, follow up for the elderly, and apart from expediting the process for dental care for elderly people, um, we also enhance our escort services, and if uh, the need arises, the outreach teams can provide services for the elderly people as soon as possible, and this applies to relatively weak and frail um, elderly people. And another focus of our work is the uh, Elderly Dental Assistance Program under the Community Care Fund. As I mentioned just now, um, the uh, um, the, f um, the group under CCF is actively looking to expand um, the scope of elderly people benefited, and um, even though this uh, program hasn't been formally approved by CCF or the Commission of Poverty, discussions have been have got, have been underway, and we have talked with a lot of NGOs who provide dental services. We we have had preliminary discussions, and uh, the scope of expansion um, would be uh, would be able to. Um, substantially increase the number of elderly people who can benefit. For um, OALA recipients, if you look at it, w right now we have almost 400,000 um, elderly people benefiting. Um, for elderly people above 80, we have more than 100,000 people. And we are actively looking for ways to expand this program and the uh, corresponding arrangements. This proposal um, can benefit a lot more elderly people, um, but right now the, the number of dentists um, is, is not enough. So we will, we, will do, we will do more on this front. Um. Six members are still in the queue. Uh, well, we have to finish by one, but uh, let's see how we go before we make further arrangements. Ms. Alice Mack, thank you. Uh, I would like to thank the deputations for coming so early to t talk to us about dental care. We have listened to what the administration has said eight or ten or more times. We understand that uh, there is an, a problem with uh, dental service manpower. And in also in the uh, manpower review, you can't really expect it to give you more manpower in one or two years. We need to train, train up dentists. We, we have this problem we have now. Why don't we give them a dental care voucher to buy the necessary service in the private market? According to a survey conducted by the FTU, some elderly persons didn't go to a dentist in the past four years, even though they had a great need. The service provided is, is just about uh, stopping the pain or extraction. The CCF is uh, providing uh, some dental assistance uh, to those on OALA. But uh, to, to an elderly person, the later he deals with the dental problem, the worse the problem. We have a doctor here. Uh, we all know that uh, you have to treat the problems uh, as early as possible. And how many teeth uh, can be retained uh, 
when one turns 80. You know that's the, the uh, WHO standard. Uh, for those uh, in their 80s, they should have 20 healthy teeth. I don't know how many have uh, 20 teeth. Not m not many, according to what I have seen in the community. Uh, Hong Kong is a uh, prosperous city. Isn't that uh, really a shame? Who would take this question? I think it's you. Well, we have already uh, spoken on manpower. Well, we're working on it. We have also commissioned a study on uh, manpower and the uh, demand and supply. And uh, we also would like to get hold of the uh, funding timetable of the UGC. So at least we we'll have to wait for six years before we see additional manpower coming on stream. But we would uh, expedite the process. And there's another issue with uh, professional qualification accreditation. We have asked the universities to offer some special support measures, for example, arranging some tutorial c classes for people who are interested in uh, sitting for the uh, professional examinations. And they are overseas graduates. Would like to see whether uh, the timetable and other arrangements uh, would be as uh, facilitating as possible. Uh, we hope that uh, we can provide uh, uh, the best relief we can uh, manage within the short term. Why don't you give them a, a voucher, a dental care voucher, so that they don't have to queue up for your service? There are more than 100,000 elderly persons in Tongchong, and the nearest dental clinic for them is uh, in Kwai Chung. A simple way out is to give them a, a dental care voucher, and they, they can, can go to a private dentist, and then you take your time to train up more dentists. Well, actually, we have said this uh, already. We would like to make use of the existing health care voucher system instead of another voucher system for dental care. This year, we've just regularized the voucher scheme, and the, um, uh, and the uh, value has been doubled. We'll see how it goes before we conduct another review. Mr. Chung, you should be people-oriented in your approach. Last Thursday, I saw elderly men and women uh, in the community. They didn't know how to apply for the health care voucher. And you just give them $2,000. They would just spend it on uh, treating their cold and flu. They would not uh, be using it. They, do not, they could not afford the dental care under this voucher scheme. Uh, Mr. Peter Jung, I thank the deputations for coming to our meeting. Well, we have been talking about dental care for the elderly for years, but the government has always insisted that uh, there will only be 11 clinics and uh, they are only available for pain treatment and extraction only. Well, we hate to repeat ourselves so much. According to the WHO the Manning Standard, how many dentists do we need if, if we take the population as 7 million? How many have we got? And how many should there be? And how many dentists have uh, graduated from their dental schools and yet they cannot uh, practice? Because uh, if you uh, do not work for an organization, you have to run your own clinic, and the rent alone is so exorbitant, and uh, either someone hires them or the government hires them. How many qualified dentists are not practicing? Do you have any statistics? And if we have uh, a 
population projection that points to an aging population, then what's your uh, estimated additional uh, number of uh, dentists that we need? When you need to recruit them, you need to train them. But uh, re realis realistically, uh, these tell us why we have only one university which will train train up 50 dentists a year. Why don't you increase the number? I think uh, even if you double the number, it's still not sufficient. And you now to try to, to cover this with a, a study. If we need to in, improve government dental clinics to provide comprehensive scope of service, how much money will be involved? How many more people do you need? Who will take this question? Uh, Mr. Lee or Dr. So? Dr. So, uh, am I getting through? Yes. But actually, there's no standard on the part of WH uh, regarding the ratio between dentists and population. Have we been working t uh, in accordance with the uh, ratio? In Hong Kong, the ratio is uh, 1 to 3,500. Every dentist for 3,500 3, people. In the 80s, it was 1 to 4,000 plus. That's before we had uh, a dental faculty. So that was uh, 30 years ago. So so we, we have just seen the uh, ratio uh, improved by 500. And uh, our, the ratio is comparable with uh, neighboring areas. We are not claiming that this is an ideal standard. We we'll continue to see how we can attach, uh, to make our people attach uh, importance to dental or oral health. And therefore, we have been uh, doing the promotion. We hope people will understand uh, the importance of uh, prevention. Well, but a good prevention doesn't mean that you will no, no, never have a tooth decay. On a manpower projection, we have commissioned the University of Hong Kong to do the manpower projection. So for, we haven't gotten any figure to express uh, the findings. And uh, the, uh, the point is made that we cannot rely on training to increase dental health dental care uh, manpower because uh, we are going to have more and more patients. Uh, then uh, however much you increase manpower is not going to be sufficient. That's why we have been trying to uh, emphasize prevention. We want to prevent the two important uh, diseases of oral care, that tooth decay and periodontal diseases. If we can prevent most of the uh, two problems, then uh, the resources that, that the community have to spend on uh, treatment will be minimized. How many dental graduates uh, don't really uh, proceed to practice? According to uh, uh, the information we have got, most graduates are working as uh, dentists. Mr. Wu Chi Wai. I have heard from the administration that you attach importance to oral health and dental care. Uh, if you are a student, the student you get uh, dental care, and then uh, you have to get very old before you once again to get some to primary dental care. It's just like a primary health care. Uh, early intervention is a must. There are two groups of figures here. What are the dental clinics doing? Uh, mainly remedial work. And then you have outreaching teams uh, serving residential care homes for the elderly. So you say you attach importance to dental care. How do you go about this? Or you may say that we have the uh, healthcare voucher system. You should uh, do more publicity. You should make more dentists accept uh, the use of uh, 
your voucher. So what have you been doing? And second, for those who are over 65 of age, have you conducted a, a sort of a census or survey to tell us the general the dental conditions? The CCF is providing uh, assistance to 10,000 people, but there are more than 10,000 elderly persons in need of dental care. For those who are older, or senior citizens, well, their dental conditions are worse because uh, of uh, what they uh, receive uh, when they were young, what they t their education was like. And now you're saying that uh, the provision of service is just unable to cope. Well, you're very unfair to those senior citizens. Of course, uh, uh, elder elders can go to the hospital for the treating the sicknesses. And uh, but teeth uh, represents something. Uh, that would go to their dignity, because if you have a bad teeth, uh, you don't want to speak to people. You are afraid of the older. Your your speech uh, will affect your social life. Have you conducted any uh, comprehensive survey on the dental health conditions of uh, elderly population? And the government uh, is saying that the private market is important, that the ordinary, the normal the dental care is uh, entrusted to private dentists, and the government take a step back. Is it fair? Uh, we do not run our public clinics under the same principle. If it's necessary in the healthcare system, we provide the services in all the 18 districts. I want to the officials to clarify all these. Uh, Issues, Mr. Chung, on the question of manpower. The manpower is tight. It's not just uh, about the number of uh, dentists working in the public sector. Uh, the Thai supply applies to the entire market in Hong Kong. And we are facing manpower constraints, not just the constraints in public organizations. Uh, the uh, health dental care assistance scheme launched by the CCF two years ago uh, was meant to make the best use of the uh, private service providers rather than just the dent dental care provided by the NGOs. And we are going to, to move down the same direction if we are to extend the service on uh, promotion. And also the survey conducted by the uh, DOH in 2011. I would like to defer to my colleague, Dr. So. Dr. So, the Department of Health has uh, pledged to the conduct a survey on oral health every 10 years. The first one was conducted in 2011, or rather, the 2011 one was the second one. We d did it in accordance with the WHO the criteria. We cover different age groups, including those from in the age group 65 to 74 who are not living in our CHEs. And in 2011, we also covered a group which uh, covered which encompassed all the. Elderly persons living in our CHEs who are receiving treatment in daycare center and those who are receiving the home based care and now rich care. At the end of 2013, uh, the report uh, was published. Of course, you can access it on our website, but if necessary, uh, we can provide you reports to members. Mr. Albert Ho, thank you. I'd like to thank uh, the elders who have come to join us today and tell us your situation. You know, uh, we have been asking the administration to improve uh, dental care for the elderly, 
and we believe this is uh, an urgent, urgent matter. Uh, you have told us uh, what uh, your situation is like. We are very concerned about the situation. Yeah, under the pilot scheme, we know that the coverage uh, has been extended, the uh, feelings, uh, extraction, and dentures. But that's an improvement. That will, that will be launched in October 2014. And only those living in uh, RCGs or they who are attending the elderly centers, day centers will be covered. Uh, many low income elders are not covered, who are not living in any type of uh, residential homes. And they will have to uh, rely on CCF, Community Care Fund. But the CCF program can only serve a very small number of elders. It's uh, more than a thousand, just a more, over a thousand. If you want to extend this to everyone in uh, low-income families, we are talking about tens of thousands of elders. But well, this is just a, a drop in the buck in the bucket. That's why another member has suggested that we introduce a voucher for dental care. Because if you look at the programs, it seems that you have everything. But the coverage is uh, limited. Many will not really be covered by the programs. Unless you go to an a elderly center or you live in RCHE, you are not covered. That's the biggest problem. I hope the government will take another look at this to see if we can uh, do this through uh, the uh, voucher scheme. Turning to manpower, I know now the Hong Kong University is providing training for dentists. In the past, overseas dentists were allowed to practice in Hong Kong, but after 1997, we, we no longer allow overseas dentists to practice here. They have to take examinations before they can allow to do it. It's just like uh, medical doctors. You have to be a local graduate or you, you, or you pass the local examinations before you are allowed to practice. In the uh, HA, they have uh, contract uh, doctors who are higher on a uh, limited license uh, basis, and they, the contracts can be renewed uh, every two to three years. Will the Department of Health like to do the same? That is to the recruitment of a dentist with a uh, limited uh, practice license. As I've told the uh, medical council, you have to allow these people to have a, a contract of at least two to three years. Otherwise, you cannot attract people to come back from overseas c countries. Have you considered doing this, uh, a limited uh, practice uh, license system? Mr. Chung? Um, for the pilot scheme for RC RCHE, um, um, the elderly people, um, the, the decision to um, Turn it into a regular program um, aims to help um, people, elderly people um, living in LCHGs. And uh, we have extended the program to other elderly people as well. For example, those in care centers and um, under other um, and under infirmary units and nursing homes. So we are enhancing our outreach program. So for other t um, for other types of elderly people, we are trying to help them through the community care fund. And the uh, 1,000 elderly people mentioned by Mr. Albert Ho, um, the um, was the num was the uh, number of elderly people benefited when the um, the, f um, the scheme was first launched in two uh, 2012. And the CCF is actively expanding the scope of um, elderly people who can benefit. 
and uh, we will take reference from the scope of the old age living allowance. So who can answer this question? Mr. Lee and our, our, exist, our existing scheme, there is no mechanism. So it only applies to doctors but not dentists, right? In our review, we will look at the various um, legal arrangements involved. M Mr. Ray Chan, today we are talking about providing dental care services to the elderly. So I hope the government um, sh uh, shouldn't um, talk about promotions, educations, prevention, etc. But these are not the things you should say to the elderly people. The government, in effect, they are tackling intergenerational um, dental care for the elderly. So the, just you're, you're saying that um, the, elder, the elderly should um, forget about treatments. Um, you are just talking about um, prevention, and you are just telling them that um, since you didn't properly take care of your teeth, that's why you have problems right now, and there's nothing you can do. For the voucher scheme, I hope the government sh can understand that um, since the uh, a lot of elderly people um, can can use these vouchers for other um, medical services, they are unwilling to um, use these vouchers on dentists. So even if you increase the voucher amount to 2000 or even $3,000, the elderly are unwilling to use them. And uh, they would wait until the, the, the disease is service. So going forward, you should consider setting up um, a dedicated voucher scheme for dental, dental services. And uh, the government is always um, worried that they, uh, um, the people could abuse the scheme. If we have a voucher scheme for dental services, they would not. Um, there's no chance that they would ab abuse the services unless they have real needs. So I I I understand that the government um, understands our our plight. You uh, perhaps you can accuse us of filibustering, but these are issues we have um, been discussing for the last two years, and the government has no um, the figures or estimations on the number of dentists or on the budgets. How can we um, increase the supply of manpower, and how much money do we need, and how much time do we need? Who can answer this question? Mr. Chong, on the uh, voucher scheme, as I mentioned, we we will retain the existing arrangements. So going forward, we will consider reviewing the arrangements. On dental care, we understand um, your comments, and we will continue our work on this front. And uh, we will continue our work on dental care services and for the LCHG pilot scheme. So can you um, specifically answer the question by Ray Chen, why don't you have a voucher scheme for dental services? Our existing arrangement is more or less uh, it's more flexible, so we would like to retain our existing arrangement. We don't intend to split the voucher scheme into two and provide a dedicated um, voucher scheme for dental services. In terms of manpower, we have to wait for the results of our study. And uh, when the results are out, we will review um, manpower, deployment, and um, other areas. And in terms of legal considerations, we um, again, we have to wait for the results before we um, this we we take it to Lechko. For manpower, um, it, are you just trying to um, buy time with the study? Are you actually going to come to us again and tell us how much more money and how much 
people do we need? How much more people do we need? Or, uh, we have to wait for the results of the of the studies, Mr. Tam Yu Chong. Chairman, a few three or four years ago, the DAB um, mentioned that the government um, should help the elderly people, especially um, when the fillings are quite expensive. We collected um, data from different districts, and under um, I've tried to um, lobby for it um, under uh, under the COP and CCF. And there's a lot we have to do, and the government is saying that um, the number of dentists is inadequate, and there's nothing much they can do. And all along, the government has been saying that they have to um, they have to seek help from um, so-called um, voluntary dentists because they charge less. And we only have 1,700 active dentists, and these um, so-called um, caring dentists can only take care of one or two patients a day. And uh, the government is only um, benefiting elderly under um, LCHEs and daycare centers, and since 2012, only about 900 elderly people actually benefited. And uh, this is some way from um, our targets. And in that case, the government has to do a lot more. And in view of population aging, um, we have a lot of elderly people with um, dental problems and diseases. And they would uh, have to, um, they they would require a lot of dental dental care services. And are we going to have more um, graduates who study dentistry? And you cannot automatically assume that with the right care, um, dental health can be uh, um, safeguarded for all elderly people. With the right care, perhaps you can um, avoid some problems, but we cannot be 100% sure that our elderly people don't need any care services. Can we um, attract more dentists from abroad? And Hong Kong has had such experience before because Hong Kong still holds a certain appeal. And for the voucher scheme, some people mentioned um, introducing a dedicated scheme for dental services of course, this is a great idea, but um, the government is saying that it will compromise the uh, um, flexibility of the vouchers. So my question is, do you have information on hand to show that um, how many um, elderly people are using their vouchers on dental care services? And do you have such data? Um, to reflect the situation of the actual usage. Who can answer this question? Mr. Chong? As I said, for manpower, apart from the review results, we are trying to help um, students, graduates from overseas universities to obtain professional qualifications. And in the review, we would certainly take population aging into consideration. And um, let me introduce some of our um, ideas for outreach, other outreach programs. And most NGOs and charities in Hong Kong um, run um, run dental services. And apart from listening to their views on how to expand our dental services. Even though the CCF also involves um, private dentists, we hope that these charities and charities and, and, and charities can uh, do more with their dental clinics, and uh, this could uh, speed up 
um, the, the provision of services to the elderly. So we hope to provide more dental care services to the elderly as soon as possible. And uh, we can, this way we can also serve elderly who are outside the uh, existing scheme. Mr. Fernando Chang. And uh, by May 2014, we have around 59,000 elderly people who have enjoyed um, vouchers. And uh, it amounts to um, more than $850 million. And uh, Mr. Fernando Chang, I'd like to thank all the deputations today, especially the elderly. Um, we we met a few of you last year, and uh, the topic of your um, study report was um, the toothless tiger. And we have been discussing um, this issue for so long. And uh, the government's what the government has done is ridiculous. They have not responded to our needs. You have not introduced a dedicated vouchers um, scheme for dental services, and uh, to be frank, the Labour Party is not um, happy with the care vouchers, the, the care voucher scheme. But um, it can be a viable um, provisional um, practice. The government is saying that um, the voucher scheme is flexible, and I'm not sure. Um, whether the government knows how much it costs to fill a tooth, do you actually know how um, how expensive it is? How how much does a filling cost? A, a denture um, cost is two thousand dollars enough? It's certainly not enough. If you um, visit um, famous dentists, it takes. At least ten thousand dollars. So, the flexibility of that two thousand dollars is uh, it doesn't make sense. We've been discussing the, the issue for so many years. We are hoping for the government to um, enhance its services. For the eleven clinics, it should provide comprehensive services covering um, filling, scaling, extraction, etc. That's as simple as that. It said uh, we don't have sufficient number of dentists, but uh, there's nothing you can do about training. Uh, when we ask you to recruit uh, overseas dentists, you say it's not uh, allowed under the law. You can amend the law. You have all the means. Uh, you have all the power, but you are just uh, you just keep talking about your problems. The government has uh, trillions of dollars in its hands. It has all the power. Policy powers, legislative powers, everything. But you are sort of uh, clueless and powerless in dealing with the problem. Well, if we are to uh, argue about constitutional development, you are not going to budge because you are saying that we are trying to seize your power. But what about dental care? Why do what? What do you have to be so stubborn? I just don't understand. Why you are so insistent about not uh, giving the the proper care? Too fake can affect your sleep, and some fifty percent uh, of the respondents uh, chose to deal with it themselves. Why? Because it's expensive. Dental service is expensive. They cannot afford it. You know that sixty percent. Of uh, those over 65 or 60 elders have no tooth at all. If one third of them are poor elders, then we are talking about 20,000 elders in need of uh, dentures. But how much have you done? It's totally disproportionate to the problem. And you are failing them, our prosperity. Uh, is built on their past 
efforts, and now you choose to ex ignore them. You have all the resources, all the powers in your hand. What are you going to do actually in the future to deal with their problems? As uh, we have said, uh, there's, there are special measures that we have introduced in the past couple of years, and there are also the extension of services, uh, including the one uh, carried out by the CCF. We have do have a manpower problem as regards uh, resources. The CCF has earmarked uh, sufficient funds to support the extended scheme. Well, the the scope that decided in the first instance uh, was a limited one. That is only those uh, receiving home-based services. How can you expand it? We have to the improve or or the change the arrangements and the booking system. Those who are over eighty, the number the more than ten thousand. We have earmarked sufficient resources. Internally, and if, if we can get more private tenders on board, we hope we can additionally uh, provide hundreds, a few hundreds of millions of dollars to extend the services. Can you promise to launch it within the coming six months? We st we have uh, only ten minutes more for this one. Uh, I will ask my questions, and then there's uh, another member, Mr. Wu Chi Wai, who like to uh, ask questions for the second time. Can you do it in six months? Or we'll try to expedite it. But uh, there are procedures that involve that uh, we need to, work, for example, improve the computer system. Whether we are talking about COP or the CCF. They all want to uh, launch the extended service as soon as possible. Mr. Chen Hang Pan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Earlier, CCF uh, set aside a hundred million dollars to provide dental care to the elderly. We expressed strong views back then because the stringent uh, eligibility criteria. Uh, the elder has to be in receipt of a home base. Uh, Care services before he or she is qualified. So it turns out that very few uh, were benefited, and then you extended it uh, to those who are receiving domestic uh, uh, assistance or assistance in terms of uh, domestic uh, chores. But still, very few elders are benefited. Uh, the government keeps saying that uh, there is not sufficient. Dentists. If you train more dentists, it takes a few years. You have a very small quota, and of course, a very few dentists uh, would uh, be involved. So, would the administration be willing to provide more training places for dentists? Uh, for as regards uh, dental clinics, uh, there is also a lack of uh, dentists, but the. Hospital Authority is now doing something uh, under PPP, public private partnership, and the patient can be re re uh, referred to a private doctor. The patient pays uh, the same the consultation fee as uh, a public clinic, as in the case of a public clinic. So you can do the same for uh, elderly people. You can ask them to. Uh, to be assessed by you first, and then, if uh, necessary, uh, he can be referred to a private dental clinic for denture or other dental care services. So the question is: Would you be willing to make reference to the PPP initiative of the HA uh, and apply it to dental care? Uh, we'll do whatever it takes uh, to increase dentist manpower. As for the PPP approach, it's uh, actually applied in the CCF. We are not just relying on NGO dental clinics. We would like to get the entire the private uh, sector, private dentists, the entire body of private 
dentist to be involved. We will also to do more to attract more dentists uh, to the participate in the CCF uh, program. Well, CCF is not a healthcare organization. When elderly people have dental problems, they need to go to a dental clinic for consultation. So how can you uh, incorporate? The problem is how you can incorporate the dental service required in the public sector. CCF cannot be there to provide assistance uh, on a long-term basis. If you do not do this uh, through the public health care system, you are not going to help the, the majority of elderly people. Uh, I don't think you should rely just on the program of CCF. We will have to take uh, a good look as we go along because uh, the, the manpower situation is, is about the, 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 uh, the sector as a whole. It's not just about the manpower working in, public, in the public sector. Or you want to increase manpower. What's your plan on that? Mr. Chung, we are conducting a strategic review. We hope in respect of uh, local training, we can uh, come up with uh, a, f a finding as soon as possible. And then we should try to uh, ask the uh, UGC to uh, increase uh, resources and uh, places in uh, the service providers. On the other hand, we'd like to ask assist overseas graduates to, to come back and pass the licensing examination. In particular, we are interested in attracting the local people who are who graduate from overseas universities to come back to the practice, and we'll try to make sure that the timetable of the licensing examination is flexible and uh, facilitative. I want to ask the three gentlemen here, do you have family members who once suffer from uh, toothache? Any one of you? Uh, do you have you experienced any uh, incident of uh, toothache? Have you had uh, toothache yourself? So if you have, uh, you understand that toothache is uh, maybe even if it's worse than a serious illness. Uh, people in my age uh, all have similar experience. From what I have heard, uh, Mr. Chung, it seems that you don't quite understand their experience. You want to c conduct a study first. It's going to be a protracted process. Uh, more than 500,000 people have benefited from the voucher scheme, and we have spent more than $800 million. So the quickest way forward is to launch a dedicated health a dental care voucher system. And even if your uh, work produces results in six months' time, we can at least do something in the interim. But don't say that uh, it's painful, but uh, just bear with us. And also, there are only 11 clinics. People are asking that there should be 18. Uh, the speakers of mine. Well, they provide only extraction service. If you need a denture, they ask you to go to uh, a private clinic with 11 clinics. We hope that every district will be uh, equipped with one dental clinic. This should be proceeded uh, with uh, speedily. Well, you have exaggerated the manpower problem. I don't deny that there's a manpower problem. But have you been uh, telling us the whole truth? Can you tell us more about uh, the idea of a dental care voucher system? And uh, can we have 18, dis 18 the district dental care? But that's all I can say. The value has just gone up to $2,000 under the voucher scheme uh, this year. We have to take a serious look before we can launch a new, any new measure or any new voucher schemes. Uh, I'm sorry, that uh, that's all I can say at this stage. 
on the question of the expansion of public sector dental service or subvented uh, dental services, a lot would depend on the manpower situation. We 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 see how what more we can do in for for to provide uh, more services in the clinic. At this stage, I cannot really promise anything. So, what are the problems? What are the difficulties? Uh, let's set aside the question of manpower. Can we have a, a dental clinic in each of the eighteen districts? What are the problems? Uh, insufficient space or what? And second. 590,000 people on OALA and you've spent more than eight, uh, sorry, uh, not OALA. 590,000 people have used the healthcare voucher and you sp have spent more than $800 million. You, you do have uh, the means to add more to the voucher scheme's value. Every time you have a public uh, Works project it costs us um, billions of dollars. So what what's the, what what are the problems, financial or otherwise? As I have said in answering Mr. Tam Yu Chung's question, so far some fifty million dollars have been spent by uh, the voucher scheme uh, recipients on dental service. Uh, this we have just increased the value of the voucher scheme from one thousand to two thousand dollars. We would like to encourage elders to you make the best use of it. If we are to do more, we need to have another review and see what further enhancement can be made. As for the a dental clinic in all the eighteen districts, uh, we cannot really we are not in a position to promise anything. I ask you about the the problems you have. Lack of uh, premises, space, but we have the elderly health centers in the district. Uh, Dr. So, uh, it seems that you are not uh, in agreement with what we have heard. Well, the government the clinics uh, are, are f full up to its full capacity in uh, providing services to the civil servants and their families. Please give us a, a document setting out the information you have given us. According to what I've heard in the community, that you do have the means uh, or premises to, to do more. So, uh, Wai, any other questions for the second round? So if not, um, let's invite Mr. Wai and the Vice Chairman also. Three minutes, please. Um, we've heard about the manpower deployment, um, but a lot of um, policies are still uncertain. For example, you're still not sure whether um, the dental services should only cover civil servants or it should serve the entire public. And you're also un un uncertain um, whether um, to enhance dental services in the 18 districts. And you're also uncertain that um, uh, the, the government, um, the, the existing dental services also cover um, the, um, immediate problems, and it won't, it wouldn't cover um, uh, services like fillings. Right now, if you are not even sure yourself why um, what kind of um, services you want to provide, I'm not sure why how you can uh, um, calculate the uh, manpower required. You did a survey, which showed that. Um, 77% of um, non-LCHE elderly um, don't um, uh, undergo any dental checks regularly. We have a lot of elderly people who still um, who still have teeth, and with the right maintenance and checks. Or with the right treatment on periodontal diseases, um, the dental problems can be alleviated, and uh, this wouldn't cost a lot. But the government was saying that they cannot provide a dedicated um, dental voucher scheme. Well, the the words uh, for um, private um, dental 
um, scaling services, it costs 500 to 700 dollars at worst. And but if you can provide the services, at least um, the elderly people can pay a visit to the dentist. Because right now they are, um, they would rather um, uh, handle the the problems themselves, and I'm not sure how they can take care of the the dental problems if they don't visit a dentist. You are actually um, deceiving us. There's no way you can uh, come up, calculate the demand for dentists. If there's nothing you can do on the short term, the only way you can do it is to uh, introduce a dental voucher scheme. So at least you can uh, give the uh, elderly people a chance to um, to carry out some dental checks. In our review, we will look at several factors. First, um, the population assessment. And uh, hopefully the review will be done by the end of this year or early next year. For the voucher scheme, we have just raised the voucher amount to two thousand dollars, and according to the the needs, we will um, review it further. Vice Chairman, please. I have several points to make. First. When your report is done, can you um, give us a copy? And Dr. So mentioned the problem of saturation. I think uh, he was referring to saturation with uh, services for civil servants, but right now we are talking about the services to the elderly people in the 11 clinics, so please don't mis mislead us. Third, I have a, um, a suggestion for Mr. Chong. Right now we have um, um, elderly. Um, care centers in different districts, but right now it's being it's underused. Can you um, can you allocate a, a room or two in these clinics and um, and see whether um, certain dentists can are willing to uh, visit these elderly care centers and uh, whether. Any dentists are willing to provide services to these elderly people at um, reduced costs. So perhaps these dentists can uh, cha charge just 50 percent of their normal fees um, and uh, provide scaling services or other dental services. This is something you can do right away as, lo as long as you can find um, um, the, the venues. And uh, and you should see uh, whether dentists are willing to provide such uh, these so-called caring services to the elderly at night. We will um, assess the situations at different elderly care centers and uh, get back to you. For the eleven dental clinics, they um, they are not in operation at night. So can you um, invite these caring dentists? To provide um, cheaper services at night, we have to um, look into that. M Mr. Chung, um, you have three minutes. Well, two minutes will be enough for me. What Mr. Peter Chung said was very good and. Those um, dental services were intended for civil servants, but if they're not being used, you can um, you should release these services for the elderly. Apart from the elderly, um, for um, people with um, intellectual um, disabilities, it's really difficult to uh, bring them to the dentist. For example, my 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 daughter, it's you might need to um, give them a general anesthesia before you can give them a dental check and. Um, even, even that, you, you have um, they have no, um, they have no uh, venues for these dental services. You should 
asked um, dentists to serve at these venues, we have a huge demand. Even though you have a pilot scheme and you have a, an assistance program under CCF, um, it's just a drop in the bucket. Um, it doesn't. Uh, it cannot satisfy the entire demand. Apart from elderly dental services, will you consider doing something for people with um, intellectual disabilities? Even uh, if they are not students anymore, the, the, the care services for them cannot stop. Mr. Chong, please. The papers covered um, the pilot schemes we launched recently. And on the use of facilities of the Department of Health, we have to, um, we need time to give it some thought. Mr. Chong, um, other bureaus have responded to uh, similar questions in the past. There's a lot uh, you can do to help the elderly, and you only have to make um, small adjustments. So can you get back to the panel as soon as possible? You have the infrastructure already, but um, if you are willing to uh, coordinate with other bureaus, and I'm sure we can uh, really help the elderly. Members, um, so uh, let's uh, wrap up the discussion for this part. I'd like to thank the government officials for attending, and I'd also like to thank the elderly people for speaking up today. So hopefully in this transitional period, um, we can have uh, certain short-term measures to help all of you. And uh, Mr. Chung said um, the men um, the study will be completed by the end of this year or early next year. So, um, so uh, please um, take notes. Thank you very much. I think it's a great idea to release the dental clinics at night to serve um, these people. We are willing to wait at night. At least we can receive services. So thank you very much. The speaker is off mic. Thank you very much. We will do our best. On to the next item on the agenda, um, services and policies relating to family support. Let's invite the officials and the deputations. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a lot of steps. Please watch your steps. Um, the meeting should last until around 1 p.m. Welcome. Please be seated. Good morning. How about the deputations? Are they here yet? The speaker is off mic. We'll talk about um, support and um, services and policies related to family support.
Welcome. Please be seated on the right side. On your right. Um, the name plates are on the uh, are in the cubicles. Welcome. Um, let me introduce the uh, administration, including um, the uh, Deputy Secretary of um, for Labor and Welfare, and Mr. Fong, Assistant Director for Social Welfare Services, and Mr. Fong, Assistant Director for um, Social and Welfare, and. Uh, we also have Miss Chow from the FHB, Dr. Ho um, the, from the uh, Hygiene Department, Mr. Matthew Hemmings um, from the Hong Kong Police Force, and Miss Ko also from the Hong Kong Police Force. So welcome. Um, we have earpieces for you. Um, if you um, please uh, use Channel One for the floor. Um, Cantonese for f uh, um, in in Channel One and Channel Two English and Channel Three Putonghua. If you need to use the equipment, um, if you have any difficulties, please let our staff know, and they will be happy to help. And also, please remind that your speeches here are not uh, covered by the Legislative Council Powers and Privileges, uh, Hong Kong Law Cap 382. And also, likewise, your submissions are not covered by the said ordinance. Deputations, please also refer to the notes. Uh, Relating to your attendance in uh, electrical meetings uh, or in the public gallery, uh, there are certain security measures that you need to, to pay attention to. Uh, the notes uh, have been uh, tabled for your reference. First of all, I'd like to invite the administration, uh, Labor Welfare Bureau, Deputy Secretary. Is that uh, that you are going to give the introduction? You have five minutes. Okay, I shall be brief, uh, Madam Chair. First of all, I would like to talk about the basic principles. We agree that uh, the family is the cornerstone of our community. We want to promote harmony. We want to have a harmonious society and uh, prevent or uh, reduce prob problems with families. We have uh, the Family Council providing an uh, interdisciplinary and interbureau, interdepartmental platform to deal with uh, uh, domestic problems and family problems. It advises the government on the various issues and measures, and uh, the Commission on Poverty, the Youth Commission, and the Women's Commission uh, all have their chairman uh, sitting on the uh, Family Council as uh, ex official members. As starting from April last year, we uh, asked all the uh, bureaus and departments in devising their policies to assess the implications for family when they uh, want to propose initiatives, and the uh, assessment must be uh, contained in the electrical brief and all other policy papers for the policy to be considered. We also encourage bureaus and departments uh, to, to look at the implications on families when they propose uh, new uh, measures or programs, and we encourage them to con consult the council. In the paper, we have set out all the relevant uh, welfare services uh, for families. Uh, our uh, efforts in public education and publicity. At present, we uh, we uh, mainly rely on the integrated family service centers to provide uh, uh, services to our clients. We are also now conducting a review on um, mental health services, especially the services to the uh, young, the mentally ill. Uh, we are here to listen to deputations. I'll uh, pause here and uh, thank you for your attention, Madam Chair. 
Today we have ten deputations. Everyone will get three minutes. And if you haven't give, given us your recent submissions, please do so after the uh, meeting uh, for record keeping purposes. First one, Mr. Jiang Yung Sun from uh, DAB. Thank you. I'm the uh, spokesman uh, for DAB on this subject, and I'm also district councillor for Sam Shui Po. I want to talk specifically about domestic violence. In the past few months, there have been a number of uh, tragedies uh, causing uh, social concerns. Uh, one happened in Wing Chun Train in Sam Shui Po. Uh, in the district council, in my district council, there was a discussion last week, and uh, there are a number of uh, points uh, on which we have consensus. I would like to bring the, the, this to the attention of the, of the government. Where many housing estates are taking in population now, well, there's a, a lack of a sufficient social service support, and the social network is yet to be well established. And in Wing Wing Chun estate uh, case, there was no social service agencies operating there at, at the moment. There should be better support service, for example, for newly. The, completed uh, housing estates, uh, the uh, social uh, workers agency should move in first before population f followed. And we should uh, ask the relevant funds such as CIF to do more and the housing departments should certainly do more to support the new tenants. And last time the, the SWD gave us uh, a number of programs, uh, more than 30 of them, and we our impression is that, that they have too many pro programs, but too few people working on those pro programs. Uh, the front lines, uh, social workers are facing a heavy workload. Uh, especially, it's a luxury to talk about emotional support to clients. Social workers are there to uh, tackle the immediate problems, uh, and they have little spare capacity to uh, deal with people's uh, emotional problems. Uh, maybe uh, the SWD should uh, de devote uh, more people and uh, resources to the, to counseling. Last time we had uh, we 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 had people to, uh, op working in uh, maternity or child care centers. It seems that uh, they would uh, conduct a Opinion surveys among the new mothers, but the support is uh, far from sufficient. We hope that uh, the, uh, we can see further improvement. And many parents have told us that uh, uh, the waiting time for services is exceedingly long, and they are not uh, really uh, going to f find it uh, acceptable, and uh, they. they they are very reluctant to seek help from uh, psychiatrists or psychologists. And we have uh, another tragedy involving uh, parents and children and, and, and children uh, with uh, mental conditions. Uh, the homosexual groups have been asking uh, the setting up of a refuge center for homosexuals after the enactment of the law on domestic violence. Will the administration be willing to do this? Can we have a refuge center for the homosexuals uh, who are victims of uh, domestic violence? Uh, we don't have anyone from uh, Hong Kong Rainbow. It's been said that there is no uh, provision on the part of the government. When someone seeks help from the government, they will just refer the case back to NGOs like us. When are you going to do this? This is not controversial morally. Even Dr. Fasila Leo won't object to it, and you won't have people standing in front of uh, the uh, Finance Committee chairman protesting. And even if uh, you have a spare uh, quota, it's not uh, really appropriate for homosexuals to get admitted, 
to go, to get admitted to the refuge centers for the heterosexual people. Sexual minorities uh, are not get, going to get uh, sufficient or adequate services in uh, mainstream just service agencies. So sexual minority groups have to do what is supposed to be government work. After the uh, legislative amendments on uh, domestic violence, the government has not provided any resources to sexual minority groups to provide uh, refuge service to victims of uh, domestic violence. And I think the homosexuals who are victims of uh, domestic violence should not be forced to go to uh, mainstream welfare organizations because they are very worried that uh, they they may be getting the improper treatment. So shouldn't the government provide uh, resources to uh, to sell out uh, such centers for homosexuals? If you have problems, tell us what the problems are. And I don't think that this is uh, controversial uh, among the community or among legal members. Uh, good morning, Chairman and members. Oh, well, the uh, legislative amendments uh, were passed uh, f three or four years ago, and now that uh, homosexuals are are protected in respect of uh, domestic violence, we have had uh, many meetings with the SWD, but uh, it's all talk and, and no no action. Have has anything been done to assist victims of uh, homosexual victims of domestic violence? We haven't seen anything. Not even a leaflet publicizing uh, the protection. There's no the outreach service f uh, to ascertain uh, the seriousness of domestic violence uh, among homosexuals, and there's no uh, subvented uh, welfare services. And so, in the past few years, with no resource provision, uh, sexual minority groups have been uh, doing a lot to understand uh, domestic violence. And sometimes the violence is uh, violence uh, between the homosexual couples, or uh, violence uh, between the, their parents and their children. Some uh, parents don't accept uh, the homosexuality of their children. And the violence can be very serious. And uh, we have received a call saying that uh, his parents uh, uh, could not accept his homosexuality. He was beaten up. He was asked to uh, go within a week. And uh, they didn't want to see him again. And we referred them to an organization, welfare organization. Dealing with uh, domestic violence, the social worker said the case was not serious, uh, so that that homosexual victim was not denied a place in the in the refuge center, and uh, the social worker was not familiar with uh, domestic violence involving homosexuals, so that uh, victim and en ended up uh, being beaten up by his parents again. So what can we do? in the face of uh, homosexual victims. And uh, there's another case that uh, a lesbian uh, used a gun to threaten her partner. And then there's another lesbian uh, uh, injuring her partner with a knife. So you, it would take such a serious case when uh, there is a press coverage. And then you get. Uh, some publicity concerning the uh, the need to do something about domestic violence um, uh, among homosexuals, and, and the government is not doing sufficient to deal with the situation. Next, we have uh, Ms. Chung from uh, Kwan Fu. Well, I just want to say something about domestic violence. 
Uh, my association has no social worker, no activity organizer. We have very limited resources. Uh, we depend on uh, our own members and uh, and help from uh, citizens in the community to carry our work. Uh, when we uh, receive uh, requests for assistance, we have to refer uh, the person back to uh, an NGO. And uh, there are cases involving new arrivals where uh, there are two such cases where the, the two women came to Hong Kong on one way permit, their husbands uh, did not uh, accept them, and uh, the women were abused. One involving uh, the, the wife. Uh, who cannot uh, give the husband a child. And there, were, there are cases, three cases that we know of, uh, where the uh, wife was beaten up by the husband. So whatever they want us to help, uh, we have no choice but to refer back to the uh, SWD's uh, family service centers. And some uh, housewives uh, join certain religious cults, and they would uh, abandon their children. I don't know whether the government has uh, looked into such cases. Although we respect people's right uh, to religious belief, well, we refer those cases to social workers in uh, other NGOs. Uh, we were told that uh, such cases are were difficult to handle because they wouldn't listen to their husbands, and the husbands uh, suffer from uh, depression. And one even threatened uh, his wife with a bottle of uh, inflammable the thinner liquid and try to stop the, the wife from going to the, the gathering of uh, that particular cult. And uh, I wonder whether the government has really to look into how such cases can be seriously uh, handled. I don't want uh, the answer to be lighter. Well, it's difficult. And my association uh, has limited resources, and we can only make referrals. Uh, Mr. Leung Kitong, Hong Kong Chinese Civil Servants Association Social Work Officer, Great Branch. Um, we had a lot, of, uh, a few family tragedies um, these days, and many of them. Uh, occurred in newer um, residential developments like Kai Tech. And every time when we see such incidents, um, we were asked how many social workers, how many more social workers we need. And the answer is always we never have enough. And uh, But the focus of uh, my paper today is to um, develop um, community work. If we don't have the enough uh, don't have enough uh, community infrastructure, then uh, it's easy to see problems later on. And uh, for um, single um, individual units, and some of them might be uh, divorced. And uh, when these people move in, um, if there's no support or infrastructure from the community, for example, if we don't have enough social workers or community workers, um, then it, we will see problems. So I've, I've been to China recently, and they are doing a lot uh, more better than us on this front. And uh, if you 
social work um, that so the number of social workers is not the main problem but we need the right um, community supports and uh, right now the uh, existing services provided are very clustered and there's no one-stop service there are referral mechanisms um, but uh, it needs uh, uh, it takes a lot of time for um, for a lot of back and forth referrals, and uh, even within the social welfare department, different departments have no um, linkage or communication, and we cannot check each other's records. So, so if we are to um, uh, coordinate with the hospital authority, the the, the matters can uh, will be even a lot more complicated and. Um, uh, I'm in charge of the uh, psychiatric department, and um, it's it's oftentimes there's very little I can do as a social worker. I can only tell them that uh, by the time you pass away, then there will be a residential um, flat for you. And I also want to talk about the laws in Hong Kong. And we are way too passive in our legislation, perhaps because of historical reasons. Um, if we are to um, take um, a child or um, psychiatric patient away, it's not so easy. Um, the, the doctor might pay multiple visits um, before um, they are comfortable with enforcing the laws. The hospital authority is um, never admits that they have no, they don't have enough um, beds, and because of these loopholes in the law, um, uh, service quality is compromised. Miss Leung Yiwa from the Hong Kong Federation of Women's Centers. Every year, we s provide hotline consultation services for more than four thousand women, as well as free. Um, Solicitor consultation services for family related laws as well as um, mutual help groups for case management before I give my views today um, I have um, had discussions with single um, parent families in order to um, provide emotional support to these parents, we must take a community approach community-based approach and provide some um, comprehensive support services. We don't have enough um, resources, so I'm not going to repeat other people's comments. And uh, for post-maternal um, depression, um, a lot of these people have no motivation to even seek help, and they're bothered by a lot of problems, for example, divorce or family problems, marriage problems, economic difficulties. These are all interrelated problems. and. Um, the uh, groups at risk are single uh, parents, um, mothers, and and uh, maternal, post-maternal depressions. They need help. They need um, people to uh, to suit their situations, and uh, their friends and families play a huge role in helping them get out of these uh, so-called holes and. Our community need to provide a lot more support, so community services and um, escort services are important, and uh, we should provide um, concrete support to the family carers. For example, um, can we help them? Uh, can we give them a break? And uh, we also need help from the neighbors. Um, a lot of people um, witness. Domestic violence on a day-to-day -day basis, um, mothers um, um, hitting their children, etc. But right now we don't have enough professional support, and this the SWD would only um, provide outreach um, services to certain cases, and we can see that the problems will only get worse, and um, the families will not get better. So we feel that the government should. Um, Provide more support for 
women bothered by marriage problems or um, pregnancy, and uh, early intervention is necessary. We should uh, set up mediation centers in the different districts, and uh, this me mediation services can help um, women with uh, marriage problems. So they can provide help apart from the uh, on top of the IFSCs. If uh, we can provide um, more promotions for uh, family-based support services, and if more person-to-person um, -person support is needed, then uh, we can help these families. And uh, against child abuse, Dr. Ho, please. And uh, we we have seen a lot of cases of domestic violence these days, especially those re involving children, and we are really concerned on the impacts for children. Um, right now, um, the government uh, is able to identify um, cases at risk and um, I, and refer these cases to family support centers, which is a good thing. But they are not providing outreach services at the moment. And uh, if the women don't bring their um, kids to the MCHCs, then the government has no way to assess their needs. And uh, depressed um, uh, women who are um, pregnant um, would receive no support for. And after um, referring these cases to the family centers, then under the existing CCDS, there's no way to um, understand uh, to to know the progress of the follow up um, work, so it's really a waste of resources at the moment. So we we recommend the government to um, provide a territory wide um, visit scheme for newborn babies in order to prevent problems as well as possible, and we can assess the needs of the women and their relationships with the family. We need to support the parents. A lot of parent, um, countries in Europe and U.S. Um, are providing resources for these um, visit services. And since 1997, we've, we have begun training our volunteers to pay um, to conduct family visits, and we also um, conduct follow-up work over the phone. Our social workers have been screened and trained, and uh, we also have social workers to monitor the work of our volunteers. We have identified a lot of um, depressed women, and we have successfully uh, prevented a lot of problems. And a lot of people have told us that family visits are very important. That's why we hope the community can inv invest more resources. The Family Council has looked at a lot of cases. And we hope uh, the council will look at the needs of children and uh, the impacts of our policies on families as well as children. We hope the government should be uh, should take action immediately and uh, conduct preventive measures. They should launch a visiting scheme for newborn babies in order to prevent tragedies. Next, Mr. Moy um, from the Hong Kong Council of Social Service. We mentioned uh, Wing Chang Estate uh, at Shem Shui Po. We mentioned the tragedy. We need to do further investigations, but uh, it inspired us to think about um, the fact that we are facing some uh, different uh, problems every day, marriage problems and family problems. They are hidden away in our community. As a social worker, how can we identify these um, cases as soon as possible and provide um, the right consultation in order to prevent tragedies. We understand that it's very difficult to um, de detect these hidden cases, but we don't want to miss anybody. Under the existing mechanism um, to, uh, un for um, under CCDS in MCHCs, it's a mechanism to um, identify um, um, women at risk as soon as possible, but we have we do have a few blind spots under the existing mechanism. Um, even though there is a referral mechanism in place, um, and these cases will be passed on to family um, support centers, but it really depends on how proactive um, the uh, 
um, the, the the relevant people are for um, for children who are um, two to three years of age. They might need to visit MCHEs very often, and they might be uh, preschoolers. For families with preschoolers, um, the um, the scheme cannot help. For Wing Chun Estate, for the incident at Wing Chun Estate, it shows that um, support for uh, moral support is very weak for newer um, residential areas, and uh, we can imagine that neighborhood support for these newer um, developments is relatively weak. And if these families have problem, it's very hard to um, seek help from the neighbors. And uh, in 2008, the HA um, introduced a um, neighborhood support team, and uh, they would send social workers to these newer residential d developments in order to build um, a sense of neighborhood within these new estates. Um, it was a rather good idea, but um, because of re resource constraints, um, they've stopped um, their efforts in this area. So uh, social, the social workers have uh, have always um, done a lot in um, supporting these um, developments, and but um, social workers alone is not enough. There needs to be a lot uh, more collaboration with other people, and we have a few um, concrete suggestions. First, we should uh, enhance a collaboration mechanism within the districts. Um, for example, um, between IFSEs and MCHCs, how can we encourage social workers to approach these families? And second, on the community level, we should have uh, we should do more preventative work. For example, um, education, and in newer estates, we should uh, reintroduce some support teams. And third, identifying families in need, we have to. Uh, Encourage collaboration between different sectors and different bureaus and departments, and uh, a lot of our work require coordination between different bureaus. Um, the key is um, that different um, policy bureaus must work together. Mr. Ng Yak Tai, well, this. Tragic case uh, involved a victim who did not seek help. I'm a victim myself. Let me share with you my experience and some of my fellow uh, uh, women victims. But uh, the point is, the SWD uh, adopts a delaying tactic in uh, dealing with cases, and uh, w uh, there was a, a fellow member of my association. Uh, who asked for assistance, but uh, no case was established for a case. More than ten years ago, the the woman and her husband uh, had a jointly owned the HOS unit, but the SWD refused to help her to and ask her to seek help from her family members. And she was uh, separated from her children. She suffered from depression, and is now on uh, long t medication for a long, long time. Another case: the victim wa was admitted to a refuge center, and uh, the social worker refused to. Help her get compassionate housing because uh, that uh, victim uh, has not been in Hong Kong for seven years. So when I was living in a refuge center, at least seven of uh, of the people there, seven of the, of the women there, did not get CSSA. The social worker asked her to move into the center and try to find work. And that's another wo woman uh, who was uh, seven months pregnant. SWD denied her CSSA because she had not been uh, in Hong Kong for seven years. And SWD forced her to give up her right to 
give up her application for CSSA before the same will be granted for uh, her child. We don't have any di uh, anyone from SWD. The director told us that domestic violence had not has nothing to do with uh, the seven-year residence rule. I, I wonder how the director of social work, uh, welfare exercised his or her discretion. And uh, some did get compassionate housing. Uh, there was an old lady, 4,400 dollars that was given to her as support. And then three thousand, three thousand dollars uh, was granted for a free person household, and my and my daughter, uh, my daughter and I, got uh, four thousand five hundred. Yes, we did seek help, but what did we get? So uh, we we uh, we degenerate from a normal person into an HA mental patient. It seems that. Uh, you don't have to provide uh, support to victims of domestic violence. So, what what kind of victims do you want to help? Sorry, uh, that's all I want to say. Thank you for uh, coming to tell you to tell us uh, your views on the subject. Uh, a reminder: if you haven't give, given us your written submission, please do so uh, after the meeting, because. Well, we well, we we treasure your views or and or your professional stance uh, in in this matter. Uh, I'll give the administration five minutes for response. We have a number of bureaus and departments here. Uh, I do, I don't mind if the response comes from more than a bureau or department. Who will take the the lead, Ms. Chung? Well, I'll provide some res uh, preliminary response and I'll ask my colleagues from various uh, departments to supplement. Uh, let me say that uh, we also attach importance to those family tragedies that we have seen uh, lately. Through the Family Council, we invite relevant departments, including the Social Welfare Department and the Department of Health, to uh, have a joint conference to ensure that we do our best in coordination. And uh, some deputations have referred to the referral system. We try to explore ways to make sure that we can make uh, referrals uh, in a timely manner so that they can get the necessary uh, services in good time. And some deputations are, co re are concerned about uh, new talents in new housing estates. Our integrated family service centers will take the, the initiative to promote their services in new housing estates. And they also uh, work with the uh, Housing estates management committees and other stakeholders uh, to maintain the uh, communication communication channel so that services can be rendered. And we have the uh, CIF community investment uh, uh, inclusion and in, in investment fund. We have uh, resources for uh, promoting mutual help. But uh, and of course we haven't forgotten uh, those affected by urban renewal and uh, redevelopment. We have teams on uh, and on providing outreaching service to needy families and people. Uh, may I now invite Mr. Fung to say something about uh, SWD's work in this regard, Mr. Fung? Thank you. As pointed out by the Deputy Secretary, uh, before a new housing estate uh, received new talents, the Housing Department and the uh, welfare service organizations in the district will make preparation for the population intake, and depending on the uh, progress of uh, population intake, they will set up uh, booths and or stands or within the housing estate. And when uh, the new tenants get the uh, their keys from the housing department or they also given information on uh, social services that they can access uh, if we look at this case uh, in the kai tag uh, kai Ching estate there were there are only two blocks or and the SWD through the uh, IFSC operated by an, an NGO uh, has adopted the same approach 
uh, there was preparation work carried out for population intake. And our colleagues also uh, conduct outreaching services. For example, family support uh, programs are offered by IFSC, our child protection unit, and also our uh, mental health for social workers. Uh, through our, our outreaching work, we try to reach uh, those so called hidden uh, uh, people in need of help. We have started to do this uh, since uh, 2007. Apart from SWD social workers, we also uh, offer uh, peer uh, counseling uh, by the volunteers who have had similar experience. So that's what we do for new uh, public housing estates. I've heard that the deputations that uh, we should uh, enhance our services. And uh, we are going to take this up with the housing department on uh, on how we can uh, further improve our work. OK. Uh, have you finished? OK. Two, two other departments I invited to speak. Uh, Food and Health Bureau, Acting Deputy uh, Secretary, Ms. Chow. Thank you. Uh, there are deputations uh, making reference to the MCHC operated by the Department of Health. The MCHC uh, provides service to new mothers uh, after the baby is delivered, uh, six to eight weeks, and then when the baby is due for uh, vaccine uh, inoculation, there will be uh, an op a survey. Uh, we use a certain chart on uh, to assess the the uh, health of the baby and the mother. It's been proved uh, by the universities that uh, we can uh, find out whether the mother is suffering from postnatal depression through such uh, a survey. But of course, there are limitations. Apart from using the uh, the checklist to measure uh, the likelihood of uh, depression, and of course uh, the re relevant uh, center worker will also make assessments, and if necessary, and a referral can be made, and services will be uh, provided within two to four weeks. And even if uh, it's assessed that there's no inclination of uh, immediate uh, depression, information will be provided to the new mother to uh, to remind themselves uh, to be vigilant and to pay attention for symptoms of uh, postnatal depression. And they are re the, the new mother will be reminded to come back uh, to, to to see the MCHC worker if uh, they detect any sign. And we also provide uh, emotional counseling to needy families, such as uh, single parent families and uh, families with a uh, history of domestic violence. And if necessary, the, uh, an immediate referral will be made uh, so that they can get uh, the necessary services. Uh, next, we have Mr. Hemmings from the Hong Kong Police Force. Uh, thank you, Madam Chan. Um, in respect of the specific is issues that were um, brought up this morning. Um, I don't have any particular comments because most of it seems to be um, directed at um, other government departments in, in respect of uh, uh, resources and follow-up. Um, all I can say um, from a police point of view, um, we continue to deal with uh, domestic violence, child abuse, etc. Uh, on a multi-agency and cross-sectoral approach. Uh, we have procedures in place uh, to guide our officers how to deal with these cases and obviously we do uh, training at various levels to ensure that they deal with such cases uh, with the required levels of professionalism and sensitivity. Um, um, reference has been made to the tragic Shamshi Po case this morning, um, this morning several times. I'm not in a position to discuss that because it's now sub judice. So um, I'm afraid unless there are any specific questions for the police, in which case I will do my best to answer. Um, I have no further comments to make at this stage. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. And I thank the three departments for their responses. Now we have, well, this meeting will uh, take us 
uh, up to 1 p.m. Members are concerned about the case, recent cases. So I would like to tell members that I would like to extend the meeting by 15 minutes. I believe many members would like to uh, ask follow-up questions, and some members may want to talk to the deputations. So uh, if members don't object, uh, let's adjourn. Let, let's extend the meeting to 1.15. Dr. Fernando Zhang, Shen Chi Chin, Tang Ka Piu, Peter Zhang, Albert Ho, and I myself. Uh, Dr. Fernando Zhang, uh, recently, there's, we have seen a spate of uh, family tragedies. Uh, we have uh, the case involving the killing of a child. So the uh, the father killed his son, and another in another case, the mother killed her daughter. It's just beyond one's imagination. What would compel a father to kill his son? He, mu he must have felt so helpless. We need to look at uh, systemic loopholes. I'm not saying that that is uh, the fault of any particular party. Of course, the party is concerned. The per uh, perpetrators must show that the biggest responsibility. But uh, on the government has a duty to look at the support system uh, in question. What should be done to improve the support we give them? And what are the loopholes, as pointed out by many deputations? In some cases, well, in 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 the past, there were few cases in Tinsaiwai. The housing department then uh, involved uh, uh, social worker teams to uh, help new talents. But once things uh, cooled off, things uh, were not as controversial, and the service was withdrawn, and the social welfare. Department would tell us that uh, they would rely on the uh, IFSC to do the pers pers publicity. It's very passive. You are much more proactive, say, in uh, Tongchong. Before the people move into the new housing estates, uh, you already make sure that the services have been there to help the needy families, and you help the tenants to establish their network. That's more positive. As for those people in need, uh, single parents, divorcees, or uh, separated couples, new arrivals, people with disabilities, or families with uh, family members with disabilities, they are all at a risk. And of course, uh, there are cases of uh, postnatal depression, the MCHC uh, service, as pointed out by many. Uh, deputations, there are loopholes, there are, uh, there are gaps. Well, you cannot rely on IFSCs for all services. Um, the IFSCs cannot do anything. It cannot um, solve all the problems. And uh, it, it gets uh, all sorts of referrals from the SWD and the police, so there's no way they can handle all these issues. And uh, some members mentioned um, um, sh sh um, refuge centers for homosexuals. I will um, perhaps uh, Ray Chan can talk about it later. And for the new towns, are you going to um, consider pilot schemes? And for um, uh, these so-called special groups, what kind of services can you provide them for them? And how do you? What will you do with the loopholes with the existing MCHCs? Who can answer this question? Mr. Fong, perhaps? For the, uh, for the incidents at Tin Shui Wai, um, as far as I know, uh, the hospital, um, the, the housing authority invited uh, teams of social workers to uh, pay visits. And two years later, 
um, the scheme was extended to Tun Moon and other districts. In 2012, um, after review, um, as far as I know, they um, they they felt that this um, the welfare services in the district were adequate already and. And uh, there were adequate resources in the estates, so they had uh, there, there was no need to continue. And uh, the service teams at SWD are similar in nature as what uh, the housing authority did, and uh, we we are in touch with the house with the housing authority and whether. Um, the HA will uh, c continue with such services later um, is open for discussion. You are just dodging your responsibility, so no one wants to take take charge. So who's responsible? Um, whose responsibility is it anyway? Which bureau should should take charge? Um, we have uh, thirty thousand people in uh, in. Uh, Shui Shun O um housing estate. So who 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 is going to be responsible? Who can answer this question? Mr Fong? Um years ago uh, we had similar tragedies and uh we we discussed the matters with different um, government departments, including the uh, Education Bureau and and uh, Housing Authority, and I think the government is regressing on this front. So perhaps Mr. Fung can respond to this question first. For Kaicheng Estate, and uh, in February 2013, we introduced an IFSC to serve the newer housing estates. And uh, we, um, the, the center served to uh, help the new population. And for Kaicheng Estate, um, even before the housing estate was in operation, the IFSC has been in touch with the um, housing authority and other NGOs to plan um, to plan activities. For the new estates, and uh, the IFSC already had uh, information on the SWD, and the SWD also paid visits. So there's no point for you to um, give us such answers. So well, doesn't matter. Perhaps other members will ask follow-up questions. Mr. Ray Chen. Thank you, Chairman. The feeling is that the government would not do anything until tragedies happen, and even that, they, they, they must. We, we must see a lot of tragedies, a lot of very serious tragedies, before the government would do anything. So, if for the, for homos, uh, for families with homosexuals, we have not seen any um, uh, Fatal incidents, yes. So the so the problem is not serious. That's the thinking of the government. So all along, the government has has been saying that prevention is important. So I agree that prevention, preventative efforts is important. So that's the first question I'm going to ask. Um, for families with homosexual um, kids, the government is not providing any supports for them. Certain NGOs um, are doing something to help um, parents with homosexual kids, but they're self-financing, um, and uh, they have approached the governments um, for funding. But the the answer was that there is no need because such um, people can seek help from the IFSCs. The social workers have no um, don't have the right expertise or experience. To help them, and uh, and that's why uh, people might set up mutual help groups between the parents. Um, 
These are preventative measures. We don't have to wait for the tragedies to happen. Um, these uh, re refuge centers can be set up before these tragedies happen. So the government um, is the government uh, re really um, really willing to help these homosexual families, or are you saying that um, the IFSCs can help these people? So, what is the government's take? And for the uh, homosexual refuge centers, what is the government's um, consideration? Does the government have plans? Do they have any concerns or difficulties? The problems are painfully obvious, so perhaps uh, I will give the government time to respond. Ms. Um, Doris Chang, please. Um, since the uh, domestic violence ordinance was uh, extended to cover different um, scenarios, including homosexual families, um, when, if, when social workers um, approach families with homosexuals, they will be more sensitive. Maybe Mr. Fung can add more. In the IFSCs, um, according to the uh, um, review conducted by HAU in 2010, um, we have provided specific services for specific groups and we have provided the right training to our frontline staff. For families with homosexuals or, f or um, alternative gender gender orientations, we have held um, focus groups and we have provided training for our frontline staff um, in order to tackle um, these specific groups. And for the refuge centers, we have five refuge centers in Hong Kong at the moment. And we also have another service center, and the number of um, residential places provided um, is able to satisfy the existing demand. And for these um, residential places, we would not consider race, gender orientation, or other considerations. We provide equal services to everyone. And uh, we would uh, look at the specific needs of different people as we arrange the residential places. And we are aware that some NGOs um, are already helping the sexual minorities. He has not answered my question. He only provided some perfect figures. He didn't res um, respond to any of the questions. My question was, are you going to um, provide funding to certain voluntary groups to help support the homosexuals. So his answers, his answer seemed to be no. Is that right? So just a very quick answer, yes or no. Chairman, um, the IFSCs um, serve the average of 150,000 people in each district and through the IFSCs we are looking to serve um, people of different uh, sexual orientations and religions. The SWD has no plan to specifically help um, groups such as homosexuals. Thank you, Chairman. Mr. Tenka Pugh. I just want to add to um, what Mr. Ray Chen said. As uh, Mr. Mr. Wong Kok Hing asked whether there will be specific service centers for men, so the, the the answers seem to be the same. I have two questions. Um, I sent a letter earlier on uh, an earlier incident in Lam Tin. A man um, was de desperate to see his um, family, a young man, 
um, the, used uh, a cutter to threaten a security guard, and a police officer came, and um, and uh, it, it was a um, emergency such, uh, situation. And for the sake of safety, the, the, um, the police officer shot the man, and the man died immediately. So on this is an incident. So what is the status of um, the investigation? As um, as far as I know, um, um, the uh, the situation was not as urgent as it seemed because the man had been threatening the security guard for some time, and as the middleman, um, the gov um, the police had a lot of time to uh, to ask um, his wife to come down. Apart from the police officer's presence, did. Um, were any social workers invited? What is the role of the SWD in this incident? The incident didn't happen over the course of one or two minutes. It happened over the course of one or two hours. For such incidents, what is the role of SWD? I'm not trying to criticize the police or give them any pressure. But if the entire is incident can be um, could be treated in a better way, then we could prevent such tragedy. I'm a social worker myself. If we uh, if we could invite um, his wife down, and what should we say to the wife? Um, it it uh, really matters. Could we have more room for nego negotiation? So the point is, the incident didn't happen um, in a flash. There was ample time. There was ample buffer time. Did the gov did the police invite the SWD? Um, Mr. Hemmings, please. Um, Chief Superintendent, and perhaps the uh, the gov the social welfare department can add more, please, Mr. Hemmings. Concerning the specific case, I don't have details here, but I <laughs> believe that it's the subject of uh, a death inquest, so again, it's, it's sub judice. But in very, very general terms, um, when an incident of this nature happens, and I'm not referring to this specific case, but in general terms, there's a number, number of things that the, 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 the police can do. Um, negotiation is one of them. Um, obviously, uh, they obviously have to ensure the safety of, the, of, of various individuals at the scene, including the police officers. Um, when it comes to the use of force, um, usually the, the general premise is that the police officers will use the minimum level of force required to achieve the purpose. Um, in respect of that, uh, or, or, or a case of that nature, if, if an officer believes that either others are in serious uh, uh, risk of uh, serious injury or death, then obviously, uh, or either to themselves or others, then they're entitled to use an appropriate level of force. But again, the specific case, I, I can't comment on because I believe it is uh, sub judice. Hi, thank you. Uh, then, uh, then, uh, then, uh, what social welfare department? Mr. Feng, is it because it happened in a short, uh, uh, fresh, there was nothing you, can, you could have done? Well, according to the information I've got, uh, the SWD was not informed about the case at the time. Uh, Mr. Tenkapiu, so obviously it should have been done. It could, it's something that the police officer could have done. And that is uh, instead of asking more police officers to come to the scene, uh, the officer could have uh, sought help from uh, the SWD because there a professional judgment was involved. Shouldn't the wife be asked to come down to the lobby? And maybe uh, you can ask a social worker to to intervene. Uh, what 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 are the uh, guidelines on the part of the police, Mr. Hennings? Perhaps you can respond to that further question. Uh, as I've already said, I can't discuss the specific. Case. Uh, my, my, I, I don't have the details of that case, but I believe um, it is the subject of proceedings already. Uh, that, that's my understanding. But whether um, usually when a case of this nature happens, there will be a review afterwards, right? And, and we will look at our um, procedures to see whether they've been followed properly and whether other things could have been done. But in respect of the specific case, um, I've, I've got no comments to make. I'm sorry, I can't help you further on that at this stage. 
will the uh, when will the report uh, of the case be ready and to whom is it going to be submitted? To the subject of a death inquest, which is, I believe it is, but I just say I don't know for sure. I don't have the details of the case with me today. Then um, that's up to the coroner's office. So possibly um, we can get back to you after this meeting and give you um, certain details. But as I say, if it is the subject of a death inquest, then we can't say anything because it is sub judice. Okay. Uh, 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 Madam, Madam Chair, uh, maybe I can uh, summarize my views. Maybe it was uh, judged by the officer that it was not a case of domestic violence because the, uh, it was uh, the security guard who was threatened, and therefore they did not refer to the guidelines on uh, domestic violence, and no referral was made to the SWD. They need to look into this. Okay, uh, Mr. Peter Zhang. I want to clarify a point with the SWD. Dr. Fernando Zhang uh, raised a question about uh, the IFSC. It seems that uh, you regard the IFSC as uh, all-inclusive, omnipotent. And uh, there has been some discussion about services for the um, sexual minorities and whether the social workers, ordinary social workers, can really handle cases involving sexual minority, especially those who hold certain religious beliefs. Can they really tackle such cases uh, effectively? And some are exert, exerting influence on colleagues, and some social workers, uh, while capable, are not willing to deal with such cases. So I hope the government would not think that all social workers in the IFSCs can all effectively tackle the cases involving sexual minorities, because uh, they may hold different views. And now uh, social, uh, sexual minorities think that uh, they need uh, a, a separate uh, refuse, a uh, refuse system. They need to have separate refuse centers. So soon the government considered that taking out services for sexual minorities as a separate uh, item. I hope the government will conduct a review into this. And in 2008, uh, the experience in Tianzhou Wai told us that it was a very good exercise, but uh, it, it was good, but it's no longer there. You you have. Uh, uh, we had uh, two uh, two years of uh, of a pilot program. It was very good. It provided good services to new talents in Tunisia. Y. And now the you the assistant director from the SWD is saying that you are going to do some publicity before the new housing estates uh, see uh, new talents moving in. Can you ask one or two IFSC, IFSC to take the initiative to establish the network uh, in new housing estates instead of just giving out a leaflets and ask people to approach you if they need help? And also uh, services for autistic people uh, are not provided by the government. You may say that uh, some NGOs are doing this, but they are doing this on a self financing basis uh, is fee charging in nature. But the government is lagging behind for many years. A few years ago, I asked a question about the number of autistic people. Uh, I was told 3,800. And then later, uh, the, the answer changed to the number of people receiving service. But the latest uh, figure in the U.S. is 1%. So if we apply the same percentage, we have 70,000 pe autistic people in Hong Kong. Why are we not serving their needs? Are we waiting for the next uh, tragedy to happen before we take action? The government should provide services to, to autistic people. And as uh, one deputation has pointed out,
non-permanent. Uh, the deputation of Fourth Rye Caucus has pointed out that the non some services are not available to non-permanent residents. Well, are you not providing services uh, t on the basis of need instead on the basis of uh, immigration status? Uh, it's uh, the same with uh, probation service. Uh, Sometimes uh, people have different views about uh, uh, offenders. We have provided clear guidelines to our workers uh, on the provision of service. It, 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 are the p religious people necessarily uh, in opposition uh, when it comes to the sexual minorities? Well, I've received uh, recently a paper uh, giving compliments to a religious body to in helping a homosexual person to to get a uh, PLH unit well this has been a serious discussion in the social welfare sector of course we uh, we appreciate the efforts in uh, individual cases but uh, I'm talking about the overall the situation here well I think uh, sexual orientation and uh, religious belief uh, are big subjects, big issues. How are we going to deal with uh, sexual minorities in the social uh, welfare sector is uh, something uh, under discussion. But we uh, have to respect uh, front lines of workers uh, that they have to they have uh, a right to hold certain religious belief. What I'm saying is that religious belief uh, may not get in the way of uh, proper professional judgment and the rendering of uh, adequate and uh, professional service to clients. Well, it's a rather uh, complex issue. It's a sophisticated uh, subject. Or maybe uh, your time is up. Uh, maybe you can leave your other uh, remarks to the next round. Mr. Albert Ho, in 2008, the uh, pilot scheme in uh, 2008 was because of the, the case of uh, Miss Madam Kam Suk Ying in 2006, and uh, the children were killed. I uh, represented the family members in the coroner's inquest. I uh, cross-examined uh, more than ten witnesses from more six government departments, and my impression. Uh, it's like what uh, Madam Kem over there told you. It seems that many people uh, are willing to help you, but what they do is just to touch your hand, and then they they will go away. First, first of all, this, uh, this uh, s child abuse uh, unit of the SWD. There was the case was assessed. And then uh, it was assessed to be not serious, and then the case was referred to the IFSC. The IFSC only to, uh, was only interested in uh, mediation. The social worker couldn't get in touch with the husband, and then uh, the wife uh, was uh, housed in another unit, and and later. She went to a refuge center. The environment back then was very poor. They only, off, they were only offered um, canned food, and uh, they they don't they didn't even provide a traveling subsidy to the student uh, to the to the children who had to go to school. And then when the hotline was called in an emergency. Two to three times that there was no one to take the course, and then the refuge center refused to give uh, the woman the telephone number. She was told that uh, the center would contact him, uh, contact her rather, in ne if necessary, and then uh, she called the police. Uh, she was injured. 
but uh, then uh, the police did not regard the case as a case of domestic violence. She was injured. She was pushed to some the glass fragments on the ground, and that's why she was sent to hospital. And then uh, she went to the police station to report a case. The computer record uh, showed that it was not a case of domestic uh, violence case, and so no police officer uh, accompanied her back to the flat, and that's why it, uh, she was killed. We 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 ask you to follow the Metropolitan London Police uh, to look at uh, the checklist to ascertain whether the case uh, is actually a domestic violence uh, case. I wonder whether this has been uh, put in place. And then uh, the hotline uh, was not uh, attended by any pe pe any people to to receive the calls. And that's another case. The the child was pushed. Uh, from an up, upper story, and then uh, she was uh, sent to uh, an asylum, uh, sent to asylum, to, but released later to take care of uh, her ailing husband. The hus the, the social worker uh, didn't pay any any uh, visit to the to the home, because if uh, the social worker had been there, they. He or she would have uh, seen that uh, that they were they were painting on the wall, saying that uh, they would they are all doomed. They would uh, die together. Well, I was involved in that coroner inquest for five days as a lawyer, and also for follow-up consultation. The time spent was uh, five minutes, and four days after the follow-up consultation, uh, the victim threw the three children from the. Uh, Fred down to the street. So the question is: uh, Do we have sufficient uh, mental health nurses? And if necessary, the, can we the mandate the return of the uh, patient back to um, the hospital? And now the pilot scheme uh, was carried out for two years and uh, discontinued now. Uh, I just wonder what we have been doing to handle such cases. I need a, I would appreciate a written reply from the government. Um, I, I cannot completely picture what uh, Ms. O said, but, but we, it's very obvious that uh, the government is regressing. And it's very obvious from what um, the SWD and police force is doing. So perhaps um, no immediate answer can be given, but I hope um, um, I, I think the, the government had uh, done something in the past, but they seem to have gone back. Um, but um, that said, uh, feel free to uh, respond if you will. But in any case, please give us uh, provide us with the uh, written response later on, Mr. Fong. Mr. Albert Ho um, mentioned different uh, suggestions. Perhaps we will, I will address them very quickly one by one. Um, I will cover um, the, the, the question, uh, the answers in more detail in writing. And uh, we, we have uh, increased um, the number of social workers and the number of uh, service places, and the operating hours have been extended. Um, for the um, IFSCs, and we have introduced a 24-hour hotline, and uh, we have enhanced early intervention, and we have uh, introduced clinical um, psychologists in 2009. And uh, in 2009, we also um, enhanced manpower um, in uh, different um, venues. Um, at different service centers, and we have 24-hour um, um, hotline service. And uh, in 2004 and 08, we um, had a we we introduced improved um, mechanisms with the police. And for cross-sectoral collaboration, since 2005, we um, set up a we set up district 
um, coordination groups. And in 2007, um, we updated our guidelines on um, uh, child abuse and domestic um, violence. And in 2007, we introduced a family support scheme, and we increased the number of um, child support units for, from 5 to 11. And uh, we also have more st um, staff dedicated to um, tackling domestic violence. So, um, so, so these are some of the the things um, in just we've done uh, to tackle domestic violence. A lot of measures are there, but um, in effect, they don't work. For example, the refuge centers, you, you have refuge centers, but in in, in uh, reality, a lot of people um, cannot live there. So I, I'm going to um, lay out my questions in writing. So I if necessary, we have to uh, discuss these issues in more detail. A lot of cases um, are uncategorized, but they, it's it's not easy to describe them uh, in a um, in limited time. Let's make good use of um, the LegCo meetings um, to discuss um, different matters. Having read the papers for today, um, these are very superficial information. Why do we still have problems in the society? Just now, I I didn't have enough time to uh, to ask questions of the Hong Kong Chinese Civil Servants Association. He said um, China is doing a lot better. I'm sure that they are tackling issues, specific problems they face in China, but now. Um, now that uh, we have expanded, the government has expanded services, but now we seem to be going backward. I'm not trying to blame you. But why do we have uh, so many problems in the society nowadays? Well, uh, th these cases make me um, think about the uh, adequacy of our existing policies. I hope comprehensive reviews can be conducted. Um, we are not going to discuss this issue again um, this year. Perhaps we will come back to it the next. In the past, we have uh, we have dedicated groups um, to tackle domestic violence, spanning several years. Um, perhaps we we have to consider. Um, uh, Reintroducing those groups. Next, Mr. Leng Chi Chang. For domestic violence and psychiatric problems, they they're closely linked with each other. Generally, for domestic um, violence, a lot of cases are to do with psychiatric problems. On the uh, after the uh, Tin Shui Wai. Incident, the DAB um, gave their views. District wise, the SWD had come up with a report which pointed out very clearly um, that um, the foundation of the community is very important. This is the, this is the foundation for everything. Um, the lack of services and facilities would lead to um, inadequate support, which then can lead to other problems in the future. I'm sure everyone is aware of that. At the same time, I hope that the uh, the, the governments um, when they develop um, new towns, they should know what to do. You have to be careful with developments in um, northeast New Territories, and you also have to be careful with the developments in Yunlong in order to not repeat the same mistakes. The DAB um, 
supports the idea of early intervention. After the Tian Shui Wai incident, and there are support services for PRH. There used to be support services for PRH, but they are no longer available. And um, uh, and uh, it's now uh, taken up by the, uh, um, the EMACs, and they they run a number of activities. When the government still sup um, provided the support um, for each housing estate, um, an NGO was in charge, and um, the, the neighborhoods. Um, Harmony was was much better, and there was closer collaboration between the estates and the community. And there were a number of visits, and they were able to identify um, families at risk. I don't think you sh you should um, cancel such measures because of a lack of resources. But the fact is, they have been cancelled. And replace, replaced by IFSCs, um, this is the situation is not uh, ideal. I've received uh, a case a few days ago, and and uh, and the, somebody um, threatened to kill himself. It's very difficult for these people to obtain the services they need. All along, the government had been prov providing um, family visits, and their practice now is completely different. Um, with good, uh, with better economic conditions, these cases might decrease. But as I said, um, domestic violence is closely linked to psychiatric problems. But right now, a lot of uh, our problems in the society are not caused by economic conditions, but by psychiatric problems. This is another big problem we have to solve. Tin Shui Wai is not the worst already, and uh, for um, we have um, organizations uh, which um, specifically serve to tackle these problems. The government is saying that they must uh, assess the problems before providing any help. I have um, experienced a lot of um, these problems myself. I've recently read from the news that there are 200,000 psychiatric patients in Hong Kong. So this is a well-known fact, and 40,000 are serious psychiatric patients, and uh, we need to provide support for for these people. The government is not providing enough support for psychiatric patients. You have to do better in allocating resources. This is a comment or suggestion, right? Do you have anything to respond? And through IFSCs, the government is providing um, services to psychiatric patients and their families. So perhaps uh, Mr. Fong can uh, give more. So first of all, I'd like to thank um, the members' appreciation for um, our services. And since 2008, we set up 24 supports. Um, integrated service centers, and from 2011 to one to to now, we put in a further 70 million dollars, and the, the sum is 250 million dollars. And for 2013 to 14, since 2013 to 14, each year we are tackling um, more than 12,000 cases every year. And one of the functions of the IFSCs is to enhance. Um, social promotion and um, outreach services. When we receive um, complaints or referrals f of um, psychiatric patients, we would provide um, outreach services. And each year we pay more than 60,000 visits. And
And on top of that, the ICE FSEs also provide rec recreational services. We have more than 20,000 members and we'll continue to review our services in the coming years. This year alone, we invested more than $9 million to uh, enhance manpower for these centers. Members, for this first round, um, uh, I, I will ask a question. Any other questions for the second round? Personally, this is an issue I think the government should tackle. Um, in general, the society is concerned with a lot of issues. Um, the, the issue of social facilities, the lack of um, services, a lot of issues are left unanswered. Since the year 2000, um, the Lechko has been very concerned with this issue. We have been following up on the issue for years. Um, Mr. Leung said, um, from the Chinese Civil Servants Association, said this was not the case. The views today seem to be that um, there had been measures by the government, but they have disappeared. We have a lot of social sentiments and um, negative sentiments and issues. If we don't face these issues head on, um, we it would be a regression, and it would be a big problem. I've uh, uh, I have a question for Ms. Doris Chang. What uh, what is your take on this issue? You should not wait for problems to happen. You should take um, you should be more proactive. Mr. Lung Chi Chang said a lot of psychiatric patients are put back into the the districts. But what kind of support are you providing for them? Um, very often, you are waiting for problems to have to happen before um, introducing measures. For years, the LegCo um, has raised a lot of issues with the NGOs. So, what have you done, and what have you not done, then, Mr. Tenkapu um, mentioned the Lamtin incident. What is what was the police's judgment on the incident was it a case of domestic violence if if so you have to summon some social workers according to the papers today um i'm uh, i it's not acceptable to me how do you tackle the problems thank you madam chair i thank all the deputations and members for offering us uh, such valuable input uh, I think a point has been made uh, by you repeatedly, and that is that uh, you think that uh, the 2008 approach uh, might be uh, working well. Uh, I will be taking this up with my colleagues in the SWD. Uh, from the Chin Sui Wai tragedy up to this time, we have been devoting a lot of resources and manpower to tackle the problems. But of course, you think that the approach, uh, the work uh, arrangement can be arranged, can be improved. We are certainly willing to take a good look. And how that can be done, and all as I mentioned, the family council as a platform to, to involve uh, different departments on how we can improve our services and how coordination among government departments can be improved. Mr. Chair, uh, if we uh, look at community service, well, after that tragedy, the housing department offer uh, goods. Uh, community service at its own expenses, and then things improve. And then the housing department uh, called it a day and because uh, things had improved. Well, this, I think part of the reason, though, is that uh, the housing department had to foot the bill.
Well, it's not just a question of resources. As Mr. Fong has said, after that pilot program was completed and the IFSC uh, or, 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 was already there to provide the services, it seems that the deputations uh, have uh, certain negative views about IFSC. I, I was a member, and that is the term before last, uh, when the IFSC was uh, proposed. Uh, I said uh, you cannot subsume everything under the IFSC because uh, before that you have you had different uh, work units for different uh, services such as, such as the, those uh, for single parents and other needy people. And now you, you have the IFSC taking care of everything. You seem to be very uh, positive about the service quality, but not. The deputations. Well, actually, there was a study carried out by the Hong Kong U. Uh, that's uh, the result of a, a study commissioned by us, and uh, it was thought that an integrated center should be set up. Well, you did ask us to take a take a look and review the effectiveness effectiveness of IFSC and uh, there, and you mentioned has been made about the housing department uh, pilot project uh, well we would uh, certainly take a look uh, at it again now members i think uh, that's all we can expect from miss chan today that's all he can she can tell us now and uh, A few meetings back, some members suggested that we should uh, reconvene the, the sub the subcommittee on domestic violence. We should set up this subcommittee again, and uh, we would we would uh, put this on the waiting list. Uh, this, that we used to have a subcommittee on domestic violence because because of uh, past incidents, and then later the, we uh, di we disbanded it, uh, and now maybe it's time to reconstitute another one. Uh, Mr. Chair, please uh, liaise with the government department's concern, and how see how you can. Uh, Coordinate your work more effectively, and you should look into why people have such negative impression of the work of IMSC. And uh, we don't have time uh, for deputations uh, because, uh, although we are interested in knowing what we can do in community building. Actually, more than ten years ago, the the same social worker that we have we see today the, came to us to to uh, propose that we should uh, go for community building uh, as a uh, as a way to handle domestic violence chairman uh, uh well members uh although i have the sort of done a sort of done a summing up but uh, the two more members would like to raise questions. Each one, one will be. Uh, we we'll have three minutes. Doctor Fernando Zhao. I think we should uh, reconstitute a subcommittee on domestic violence. The SWD uh, commissioned uh, reviewed, uh, led by Doctor Lo Chi Gong. And then uh, the proposal was to have an integrated uh, center, and now the, they also propose a review to again to be led by Dr. Lo Chi Gong. So the review will be conducted by the one who proposed it in the first place. So you are you are just uh, asking the proponent. Although we are not talking about someone from the government or the SWD, you are asking the original proponent to assess his own idea. If you ask social workers, you know how long they have been campaigning. You are asking them to be omnipotent, although you know full well that they are not omnipotent. And the social workers know. 
uh, we don't have any center for single parents or for new arrivals. They just can't cope. Uh, they cannot handle properly mental case uh, illness, mental patients, and they can make referrals. Well, you are trying just just passing the responsibility down the command chain, and uh, one pressing problem, uh, problem is uh, the lack of uh, refuse centers. Uh, from a fourth line caucus, we know that uh, there's no place uh, when you need a place. And uh, normally, you are given a two-week uh, residence period. And even if you apply for compassionate housing on the behalf of the uh, uh, assistance seeker, it takes three months to get a PRH threat. When when we press them for action, uh, they would do it uh, quicker. But then, uh, after uh, some time, they would uh, lapse. And now we have fewer domestic violence cases because they have got a new cat category, a domestic incidents. If a threat is involved, of course, it's domestic violence. Now they have a new the classification. They have a new uh, category, domestic incidents. That's why we have fewer domestic violence uh, cases. They are just trying to pacify us. We have been talking about various needs, uh, uh, housing needs. Uh, they are not willing to offer conditional housing, conditional tenancy scheme. They don't offer assistance to children uh, who are abused. And we have not time to talk to the police over what uh, should be done. And, uh, well, they did a good job, and then after some time, the, the, it, it was the same, uh, the same arrangement uh, as before. Uh, Mr. Peter Zhang, uh, I don't have sufficient time, but I need to seek s uh, some clarifications uh, with the SWD. Uh, why is there a difference between the permanent re uh, residents and non-permanent residents in uh, in the uh, in the rendering of service? And also, there's no service for autistic. Person, so uh, I would like to get some clarifications, Mr. Feng, or uh, let me say something about uh, autistic persons. Our service units are serving four thousand or so people with autistic symptoms. Or autism is a complex uh, is a complex uh, phenomenon. It covers a lot of people. Uh, even some uh, university graduates have certain the autistic uh, symptoms, and uh, autistic people can also be the mentally uh, disabled or suffering from other mental uh, disorders. We have sixteen uh, centers for the disabled. Who can, which can offer assistance to autistic people. We also uh, provide. Uh, support to the parents of uh, pe children with uh, disabilities and uh, including autism. We have also uh, increased uh, the number of uh, social workers by two to each center, and uh, we were spending $10 million more this year. And there are programs uh, subvented by the SWD, for example, the programs offer subvented. Uh, programs offered by the Salvation Army to uh, serve uh, people with autism to over the age of 15. And there are also self-financing programs uh, or, or programs funded by uh, outside uh, funds. Uh, autism is a complex uh, phenomenon, and uh, we hope in the following year we will be able to launch a new program to, uh, targeting specific age groups earlier n earlier next year or the end of this year. We would like to see this new program uh, rolling out. Yes, uh, Mr. Fung, 
I want to uh, address the two other questions raised by Mr. Zhang. I thank Mr. Zhang for your suggestions. Uh, we would uh, uh, increase manpower on uh, community building, on uh, establishing the social network for new uh, population. Uh, of course, we, do, we we are not saying that uh, everything can be uh, done by the IRSC. We need to involve the community, and co uh, we would like to uh, collaborate with community organizations. Uh, and uh, thank you for your suggestion, uh, Mr. Chiang. As regards the uh, services provided to non-permanent residents, they get some services. But uh, it cannot, I cannot really generalize uh, as regards why uh, a particular non-permanent uh, resident uh, could not get the services uh, he or she uh, required. Uh, we need to look into the specific question, uh, case in question before I can uh, respond. Uh, Mr. Leung, three minutes. Madam Chair. Well, I want to tell you something what is happening on the ground. Uh, my bosses are over there. According to the assistant director, we have a support scheme for families. Uh, back then, we had to uh, create some new posts, uh, but uh, we were not allowed to uh, increase our resources on existing programs, so we need to we had to come up with a new service and then uh, get new more people and then uh, the resources will be uh, expanded on different areas yes maybe one or two persons will be dedicated to making visits but with the in the increase in workload the the, pro the projects were no longer as dedicated as the, they used to be Uh, you, you, you. Whether you are doing a home or uh, doing home visits, these are cases. Uh, I would, uh, I would uh, like to tell you my experience uh, with uh, mainland and uh, social network building later. If you rely on the housing department. Uh, how many visits can uh, those people, uh, housing department, pay? Because uh, there, those uh, problems are recurrent. But the social uh, welfare department's approach uh, would help uh, to build up social network, and then the network itself can help. We don't have specific programs on uh, sexual minorities or homosexuals. My colleagues have a uh, whole diverse views about the uh, the uh, homosexuals uh, campaign to ask for equal opportunities. So we don't have any targeted service for them. And then if a homosexual person is asking me to give him a shelter, I can't. I can't give him a place. Because uh, I don't know whether any shelter is willing to take take him uh, in. And uh, as regards the Lam Tin case, uh, the shooting case, but the SWD uh, officer would never go to such a uh, confrontational scene because we are not uh, negotiators. Or if the uh, wife. Uh, Complained about stalking by the husband or threaten, threatening the words from the husbands. Maybe we were able to do something uh, to prevent the case. As for the district centers for the disabled, uh, as far as I understand, we may be dealing with uh, ten, a hundred or so uh, suffering from a mental handicap. But uh, you have different degrees of uh, handicap. Some are physically handicapped, some are mentally handicapped, and some centers are not accessible by physically handi the physically handicapped. So th no wonder th th we, th we cannot do a good job uh, to help these people. And uh, we have more manpower at uh, IFSCs, but we we still have the same number of cases. 
and uh, we have to take up a lot of administrative work. And I've sat in many pan panels, a l maybe 80 or 90 percent of our time um, is uh, invested in uh, waitlisting. And uh, we are helping um, different people um, um, uh, wait lists, and yet uh, I have no time for the actual um, consultation work. I've said uh, I've said this a lot of times in different panels, and I've requested um, the additional of manpower administrative assistance, but yet they were reluctant. So uh, if uh, the government cannot uh, rejuvenate its services. Um, how can we talk about introducing new services? Because the government is not really not uh, um, not even willing to uh, re-engineer its existing structure. Thank you very much. So I'd like to thank the deputations and the administration here today. In the new year, we will uh, in the new working year we will um, introduce a new working group. So we hope the government can address all the issues and questions mentioned today by our members. We have a lot of views on the existing services provided, so hopefully you can come up with um, a tidy paper um, to update us on the situation. Again, I'd like to remind deputations who haven't provided any um, papers today, um, please share your um, views in writing with us. Thank you very much. Any other questions from members? If not, um, thank you very much for attending today.